All right, everybody. I am so excited. Anytime we have the opportunity to bring in this man who I, I think I can say at this point in time, one of the Mount Rushmore guests here on Rob is a podcast that we are so fortunate to have him here in the Survivor podcast community to help us break down everything that he's seeing here in Survivor 42. Please welcome back the great Dr. Christian Hubicki. Christian, how are you? Doing well, Rob. Thank you again. It's, it's wonderful to be here, and th thank you for having me. I, it's always a joy to talk with someone who, dare I say, is a know-it-all of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and get and get and get to bounce things off you and talk to your fair audience. So wonderful yeah. to be here. Well, I, I really just uh, hope you know. It's I, I think it's such a treat that whenever you come here, I know how busy you are with everything you have going on professionally for you to come and uh, hang out here and talk about nonsense here with us. Uh, so it's uh, just it's uh, so great. I'm so excited whenever we get the chance to do it. What is going on in your real world these days? Oh, well, I'm professoring uh, as I have been for the last several years down here in Tallahassee. And uh, it's, 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 it gets, every time I think it's not going to get busier, it somehow gets busier. Uh, we have some more robots in the robot lab. Now we have ones that walk around with arms and uh, it, it, so developing new algorithms. So that's a lot of fun and a lot of work, but I, I'm very thrilled with what the team is doing. So okay. fun stuff. All right, so we are here after a two-hour uh, Survivor Merge episode uh, this past week. I think that it's been a very fun season. Uh, I really loved uh, this episode this week. How have you been feeling about Survivor 42? Well, I also love this episode a lot, and I think that the season was good, and I think that what made this episode made it a lot better, and uh, for a couple of reasons. And I think that the biggest one to me is that I like the cast, uh, but I really needed this cast all interacting together. I think to unleash the full potential of it, we got a couple of relationships here and there on the different tribes. A couple of people who you know we like each other, uh, but now this episode is like a smorgasbord. Like now it's all coming coming together. All of a sudden, there's a tri there's an alliance of eight that then got splintered into some new alliance of seven. It it is the crescendo that I think is going to take it to uh, a new level uh, for the hopefully a fun. I I predict I predict will be hopefully a chaotic ride through to the end, but we'll see. It's just so interesting this season where I think it's just so wide open. And I don't think we've ever had a merge situation where uh, the tribes have just come together and then just instantly started to mesh together. I, I was wondering if you thought that maybe part of that could be, okay, 26 day season, we're merging here on day 13. Uh, we've also had like some interplay going back to Shipwheel Island. Do you think that the shorter time frame is what is leading to much more cross pollination here at the merge? Uh, I would say yes. Uh, the sh I would say that's a that's a contributing factor. I'm just going to compare this to my own experience where uh, we swapped on day ten. So and that was pretty typical, like a day like you have a day, maybe a 13 day. It used to be day 13 swap was like the norm was the norm back in the olden days where you would have four episodes pre of, of original tribes. Then a day 13, you swap. Now it's day 13 merge. So uh, that that's a that that is a lot sooner in the game for this massive come together of people. Um, I will also credit and I think we'll get into a lot of this, uh, the advantages which yes. force people to communicate in these kind of secret ways and the ship wheel Island, as you mentioned, uh, I think that that is, I think this season is really contributing. It's less, I, I, I didn't work out that way last season with the, um, with the, with the beware advantage. I think they all splintered, but this season there's a lot, a lot of cross pollination, I think due to the advantages we can get into that too. One other thing, one of the theory I wanted to flow past you, I don't think that uh, we've talked about this, but Survivor 42, it is a season without a theme. You, of mm -hmm. course, famously played in Survivor David versus 
Goliath. You came to the merge. Okay. All right. It's the Davids over here. It's the Goliaths over here, except for the strike force of six potentially uh, coming together. But, you know, you have these other seasons where, okay, brains versus beauty versus brawn heroes versus healers. Versus, I mean, this is no versus. And mm -hmm. Uh, it really does feel like that, okay, people are just like coming together to like form like uh, this big group as opposed to, hey, let's target like one specific tribe here at the merge. I agree that the framing of a theme m mentally impacts us as players and how we see each other. Uh, when it came to uh, so so davis versus goliath there's part some part of of me that's just like well you don't want to betray these davids and be on the down in the outs from the goliath say that's narratively scary right. <laughs> and uh but but here and this is something i i i i've talked about with you before and other people that i would love i love it when the show can find a theme for this cast because if you get a good cast you'll get an electric experience in terms of a narrative and those players if they're good narrators will find the theme themselves and i think that there's we haven't hit that point yet because they all just started mixing but it certainly has that potential and that then it feels more organic it doesn't feel like someone saying that you know my in my many years as a hustler I, uh, I, I, I've learned that, that hustling for immunity idols clearly is, is the superior strategy. Unlike these heroes who are used to being, you know, winning challenges, it, it doesn't make, it doesn't fit, but this can feel more natural. I and mean, look what we got in terms of the characters, even just this episode between high and Romeo, you had people who have found a kinship, even also the brawny folks with Mike and Jonathan, you know, they found a kinship, which I also found, uh, endearing and, these and there's almost there's almost a dichotomy between those two pairs that the show didn't plan for, but it happened, and so it will feel right. How did the return of the hourglass twist sit with you? Well, I I can't say I love the hourglass twist, but I, I feel like I'm not saying anything interesting there. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think that I've heard, uh, I would agree with people like Steven that there's a, a, an improvement in terms of, uh, you know, the key change, which was of course, Applebee's, uh, mm -hmm. that certainly improved the twist. Um, you know, you know, Can you get Rob, a Reuben it, at Applebee's, you know, I've been to Applebee's several times. What there are, I'll, there are three things I'll say about Applebee's. Uh, it's cause you're a burger great. guy. I am a burger guy. You know, I believe what is, what has Jeff said? It's great. It's emotional. It's home. <laughs> which I don't know if that is that what he said, which I, I, I was like, think I he said, uh, he, he said a lot of things about Applebee's. I think oh, he said like, uh, it's big. It's um, emotional. No, I don't think that, that was. It's, I thought it was big. It's emotional. It's home. That's why I thought that. That's like uh, Applebee's I'm checking, new slogan. checking my notes here uh, right now. Uh, it's good. It's big. It's Applebee's. It's <laughs> good. It's big. I like mine well, better. He did, uh, he did hype up uh, the Applebee's being emotional at different points, also. Oh, and we'll, so we'll, we'll make sure we revisit Applebee's. Uh, but the in terms of the mechanics of the twist, like I did the improvement that kind of worked a bit, and I think confirmed in your exit interview with Lydia this morning was that people kind of saw it coming, uh, mm -hmm. just by the way it was set up. Now I don't think that makes it a twist I would like to see again. Uh, but at least it, it, we saw this with the, remember the, the, the knowledge is power advantage, you know, six years ago when survivor 41 was on, I don't know. It feels like a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, um, people knew about it so they could plan around it. And that was interesting. Right. So I think that the, the cast can make a twist that we might not like as, as commentators and they can make it work. Um, when it comes to something like the hourglass twist, I tend to look at it like, what are we trying to accomplish? What are the show trying to accomplish with the twist? And I think that, uh, so I put myself in the head of the producers who are trying to come to come up with this. And it's like, what is the intention here? And uh, and we can break that down. And I, I, I think it, there are a couple components, which I like in varying degrees. One of which is that fewer people are vulnerable, right? It's sort of a mix between typical survivor, everyone's vulnerable at the merge and like a big brother, only two people are vulnerable like a sliding mm -hmm. scale between those extremes somewhere in the middle. That's kind of neat. I think that that's interesting and has, and I think that has good potential. And I think the thing that sits wrong with people is when it feels like the show is lying to the contestants saying, Hey, win immunity. Oh wait, by that, I mean, you almost certainly won't get immunity if right. you win. 
right? That's what's, what doesn't sit well. So I try to break it down in terms of things that work and things that we don't need. And so. you always do a, a great job with this, uh, looking at sort of like, okay, what is the intentionality of the producers and what is the good? I, I remember that we did a podcast, I think it was right at the end of The Edge of Extinction. And uh, we went looking for, because I know that, and you do such a great job about this. Some people think, you know, we just complain about the twist, but uh, you always are able to sort of look for the uh, silver lining of like, what are they going for? And what actually worked here? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. And and, uh, and to me, I do like the idea of having fewer people vulnerable uh, vulnerable at the merge. Yeah. I think that that, that I, there's something there to that because what would we we would often see at the merge, and I really got a data, you know, just some data analysis on this at some point. What it felt like, maybe from my own experience at some other try and also some other seasons, was that that first that first vote is so crazy, and we saw it tonight. By the mm -hmm. way, two hours of the merge, I approve. That's a time to have a two-hour episode if you're going to have it at a, a, a right. fixed time, right? Um, because so much is happening, and like that craziness that you see going around camp, I bet that happens on most seasons, but they don't have time to show it. There sure. are twelve people. Like these people have never been on a tribe with another eight of them. There are eight people they don't know that they suddenly have to get a plan together with. So it's exciting. It's chaotic now, uh, but as a result. That chaos leads to a lot of fear, and that fear often leads to a very simple decision. Uh, I don't know. Let's get rid of this person. It, like I, I bet like a Chanel would have had a lot of trouble had there not been a twist like this because mm -hmm. a lot of – she didn't seem from to our eye have anyone in her corner. And that would have made her, it's almost like another, it's like, Gabby always told me that the, the, the merge boot is almost like a first boot these days. And that like, who, like who's an easy pick? And this pro helps prevent that. So I think it just needs, so we just need a different way of implementing the partial safety of the merged tribe. Yeah. The merge votes have not been great in recent uh, history. I, I tried to do a ranking of sort of the post modern or, or the modern day, like post heroes versus villains merge votes. Mm -hmm. And there weren't that many seasons that had super exciting merge episodes in recent history. Uh, 42, I think, certainly had that. I mean, Survivor 41 uh, in recent memory. Of course, uh, Ghost Island uh, also, uh, you know, uh, very exciting merge, even though it was a lopsided vote oh. once again. I think that, you know, we have these big merges, and I think that probably, uh, like, in recent memory, like, the average merge vote is about, like, 9 to 4. Yeah, I mean that's 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 really it's really typically lopsided, and, because, and it's in part because it's so crazy. You are, uh, I mean, I remember running around in my beach at the merge, and like I I was desperately trying to get. Uh, it, it was so much crazier than you would ever see on the show because for for many reasons, even even the vote, but the the vote was lopsided. But like I got like maybe a minute to talk to Kara who I had met for the first time. So like it, as a result, people just say, screw it. What's the easy thing? Everyone's saying this person voted out, vote, vote them out. So now this forces them not to do that and forces them to mix it up and work together on the first vote of the merge. And that first vote of the merge, I think is very impactful uh, to the rest of the game. I think I got to credit Adam Klein. I think that Adam Klein years ago, even before I played had done something to the effect that, the person who votes uh, with uh, the, the on the right side of the merge, uh, the, the merge vote is on the right side of the merge vote, far, wins far more often than the people who don't. Now, I've never done the actual p values or whatever on statistics on this, but that has a, that rung a lot uh, that that rang true to me mm -hmm. that being on the outside of this first merge vote sets a tone that you're not cooperating with the people in charge, and you're likely vulnerable. So this forces craziness and hopefully sets a tone for future craziness. Yeah, I usually wait till the end to bring in some questions, but we got a question from uh, one of the listeners, Taylor, who said, we hate the hourglass, but the last mm -hmm. two merge apps were probably the best merge apps in 10 seasons. Is Jeff onto something or does correlation not necessarily equal causation? Is there a third variable that could account for the increase in merge episode quality? Uh, you might have a perfect storm. Like, let's take, let's, uh, let's assume that there's a completely different mechanic by which 
we determine who is safe and who is not of those mm-hmm. terms. Because again, it's the thing we don't like. It's the uh, I, I think that is is the is the lying to the contestants. I would peg that minorly. Also, giving one person so much agency, even though to be honest, it feels like they don't even have a choice. You know, it's like, it's like right. hey, do you do you want to be false choice? Want the merge right. voice? Right. Yeah, it's like, it's like so. It's so let's take that out of the equation. All the other factors lead to a, uh, a a great crazy vote. One, it's three tribes in this in this current uh, 30, 41, 42 format. So no one can come in with a pre-established alliance of a majority. You have to work with other people. Um, so which has happened in the I would say that you know people pulled together uh, uh, powerful majorities from three tribes. Uh, season thirty five comes to mind with Heroes, Healers, Hustlers. Uh, but it, it it tends to lead to more. Uh, fusion of, of, of cross tribal alliances. So that's that's one factor. Number two, you're forcing, you're put, you're, you're you're grouping pe- keep people together by force by saying certain people are immune and certain people are not. They mm-hmm. are gripped together. Okay. Yeah. Number three, you have the cross the, the the information sharing advantages and these shared secrets. You have in this case, you have two of them. You have the amulet and you have the you, you have the the beware advantage idols. Okay, and I want to point out a little numbers here in that, to my eye, there are seven people who voted together at that vote. I think maybe eight if you included oh, uh, maybe included Omar in that. Oh, let's see, people who voted together here. Uh, Drea, hi, Mike, Omar. Omar Marianne, did not have a vote. Omar, he, did Omar, not, he would have voted with them. He would have voted with. Vote. Yeah. He, he would have voted with them. Omar would have voted with them. So there, there were six, six total people, but Omar right. uh, would have been with that group. I'm counting as an alliance of seven. So thank you for clarifying for the audience. Yeah. So uh, alliance of seven, six votes. So Drea, hi, Mike, Omar, Marianne, uh, Lindsay, and Jonathan. Uh, all those people, that's those seven people have all eight advantages, mm-hmm. all eight of them. Not so, and, uh, the, 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 I mean, and in fact, the only people of those who don't have advantages are Omer and Jonathan and Jonathan in, in a way is he's, he's his own challenge advantage. In, mm-hmm. But the, so, so like, and Omer had, was, was a strategic, uh, had strategic prowess this episode. So this is all the people with power came together. <laughs> and I imagine because, you know, if I had a secret, you know, which would, let's say I was on this on, in this game and you're on another tribe, Rob, and we secretly know that we have idols. Guess what? We're talking at the merge. Of course we are. And that mm-hmm. leads to a natural chance for us to come together. So th- I think that that's a strong factor. So the combination of the uh, 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 of the of this of the cross tribal advantages, the addition of the um, the three tribes. Uh, I would say the shorter season helps, uh, but also the um, but also the partial immunity to the tribe. Those four things together, great merge. Okay. Um, do you think I have a couple of uh, follow up questions to that? Uh, one, do you think that we are headed towards a, a paganging of the non advantage people? I don't buy that yet for a couple reasons. So, like, I, um, because the mere fact that all these adva- the, the fact that all these people have advantages is specifically the amulet advantage, which really f- doesn't feel like a full advantage in a lot of ways. I, I rewatched the premiere just before I came on tonight just to make sure I got the mechanics of the Emmanuel correct. You. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, you know, you know, you invite me on your show, Rob, and I try to do my homework. And yeah. so the and so they talk and uh the way that High reacts at the time, he clocks it. That's like this is not as powerful as I hoped it was because I I I didn't even clock the fact that uh like it it's worth an extra vote the advantage. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking like, oh, okay, so they each have an extra vote. No, they all have to agree to use their advantages together to yeah. get one extra one vote. One extra vote, right. One extra vote. And so like, so, so there's strong and A lot of cooks in the chart. kitchen for that. There, there are. And uh, I, I have a hard time believing that some of these folks won't want to pick up someone like Chanel, uh, who certainly wants to stay around mm-hmm. and is currently knows she's on the outs for a vote. Um, now, so if if I had to put money down, if I were at the blackjack table, I would vote that they uh, I would put my money on the fact that they would turn on each other. OK, my follow up question is also, do you think that there is a likelihood of a potential advantage get in in season 42? 
I was thinking about this. I think there is a possibility. Now, uh, it's hard to predict how these idols go down. I mean, keep in mind, we had three idols in 41, uh, if not more. I, I, there's definitely yes. the three from the Bearware Advantage that got it, that, that got uh, that got Three idols about. were in play at the merge, right. Three, three idols were in play at the merge. And so and none of them ever got played, right? Like, so uh, uh, Xander played his idol at the final five, at the final but, five. but, but he yeah. wasn't getting any votes, right? The, 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 the default play, play placement of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, effectively no, uh, uh, no, no effective idol plays in that. Mm -hmm. So you don't know how it's going to go, but here, yeah, yeah there's, uh, there's four potential idols in play, right? Right. So, uh, so I was trying to do the math. I was, I was checking out like, when are they valid, valid up until, uh, the, the advanced, the amulets up until the final six. Right. And, uh, I'm assuming that the idols in the modern, this now postmodern era are only good up to final six as well. Cause it can't be final five. Cause if and that I were the feel case, like last season, I feel like the shot in the dark was, uh, oddly till seven. Yeah, I think it's for this yeah. exact reason. Because if it's at six, the concern is that uh, they don't want to have. There's a real chance if they're not careful, there will be no one. They won't even have Sari to send home. They have to fly in Sari mm -hmm. just to get her advantage getting doubt. Because yeah, they not to mention somebody them. will have one immunity. Yeah, exactly. So as a result, there will literally be no. I mean, there's mm -hmm. one. So at, at the final six, uh, it, um, it, uh, at the final six, there's a chance for advantage Ganon. Ganon, someone will have one immunity. Three idols will be played. Uh, a fourth idol would be played for the, for the amulet. That's five total. And as a result, there is uh, only one person. So there, there, there is an advantage Ganon possibility here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So a lot going on. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Now, it that's it's a lot to track, so we will do our best together. Okay. Let's talk a little bit more about specifics. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested to know your thoughts on uh, this plan that Omer ended up uh, putting into motion to take out Lydia uh, at this vote and uh, High and Mike going along with it. Uh, did you like the idea for High and, to a lesser degree, Mike to sacrifice Lydia for the expense of uh, keeping this newly formed alliance of eight or seven together. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think I, I am, um, I can say maybe it's a, maybe Marianne took Lydia's spot in the eight. Yeah. I mean, it, it, that's, it's, it's sort of like in a, like sort of like a blob that's like in the seven, eight ish radius uh, of, of people. Yeah. I, I mean, I can totally understand why high would do that. And I, I, if I'm trying to try to put myself in what I know of his position, I'd be like, man, I cannot upset the apple cart at this beginning of the merge. I need these people to know, like, like I wish I got in my way. Clearly orange has all the cards. I need to fight another day. And um, looking at this, this seven, I'll, I'll call it a seven, just because of the people who appeared to be voting together, including Omar, who would have voted that way. Um, you have all four of the original, let's see, look at that, the original Taku tribe, all four yeah. of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you don't think that's that's not going to be threatening to some of the other people in the game that you have all four of the original Takus in power and everyone else is is, is splintered. I think that um, there is a, certainly a chance for high or someone in else in a similar position uh, to, to to recoup and and build a new build new bonds. Although it would have been a bit, I think Lydia was a big loss for him. Mm -hmm. I thought it was very interesting. I had watched the episode again uh, this afternoon, and one of the things that uh, really I guess did not sink in when I watched it uh, originally on Wednesday was so Omer goes and has a conversation with Lydia, which I think was really uh, super pivotal in how things went down. And he basically is asking her about like, OK, uh, is it between Jonathan or Marianne? And he sort of says, it sounds like to me that you're saying that you're leaning a little bit more towards Jonathan. I think that Lydia was kind of just looking for an exit ramp. She's like, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, but uh, really, what, whatever. Uh, you know, I'm looking for a anybody but me. And then Omer, I felt like that really like weaponized that information of that. Uh, that you know, had she been able to like read Omer a little bit better about mm -hmm. like who his uh, true ally was, and said, actually, no, Ma uh, Marianne has to be the vote. Uh, I think that he would not have had as big of a card to play to the rest of the group of, hey, Lydia has turned on our eight. Yeah, I, I, this actually gives me shades of original in a very different way, just in, in terms of the, is the original Tony 
Tony part one. Mm -hmm. uh, it reminds me of when he when Tony approached LJ. Was it LJ? Yeah. That it's like it's like LJ. What do you think of getting rid? Of? I forget. Pretty, I forget who the target even was. Woo. But it was, it was uh, woo. Yeah. And, and, and LJ is sort of like, uh, yeah, I, I guess. Uh, oh my sure. God, Woo, did you hear LJ? Yeah. He's trying to get rid of you. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and, 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 and to some degree, you're almost what? like, it, you could say any, I mean, if that, if you're using, if you're distorting it to that degree, you can just make it up anyway. I guess it just, uh, it, it only creates momentary confusion where like, if LJ were approached by Wu, was like, I heard you trying to get rid of me. At least that would create momentary confusion of like, oh, I didn't mean it like that. As opposed to just denying it, but the but it is just it is a weaponizable thing that if you get any kind of hesitation toward this group, yeah, great great job on Omar and weaponizing it. He might not even have needed that uh, that opening. He could have just made something up, uh, which maybe is inspiration for other players for the future. That you just come up with a plausible enough sounding thing, and how is it any different than what Omar pulled off? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was super impressive for uh, what Omer uh, did in this episode with not even having a vote here uh, to be able to really like uh, pull all of the strings uh, to be able to, you know, save Jonathan here in this spot and, and save Marianne. Yes. And I think that uh, I, I loved one of the things I loved about this episode was getting the reasoning of the players. We got what people's theories of the case were for the game in front of them. And for Omer in this case was I, I, what he said. First, I'm like, I don't have a vote. I'm not even, a, I'm not even a target. I'll just stay out of this. But then he correctly clocks it and says, Hey, that's wrong. If anything, I need to like, you know, like my game is on the line here, not today, but tomorrow. So I need to. So like I got to make sure that whatever goes down is in my interest. And that forced him to step up. And, yeah. uh, and so that was great. I love that scene. It told me how he was thinking and and the progression of his thoughts. And it was the same for many other players, too. Well, it's just so fun because I feel like that this has kind of been where I, and you opened this up and you talked about how, you know, it's great when we could sort of like discover the theme of the season. And I don't know how to necessarily like uh, articulate this in terms of like a catchy title, but this is kind of the same idea that came up back at the Vati tribal councils where uh, Daniel and Chanel debated, you know, OK, well. I don't have a I don't have a vote. I don't have a say. You have to you have to make this decision. Mm -hmm. Uh and and Daniel's argument was like, no, no, of course, of course you have a say. And 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 Chanel didn't want to get involved. Mike didn't really want to put his thumb on the scale because if I don't have a vote, how could I have a say in who goes home? How could I blindside you? I don't have a vote. Yeah. If, if you're if you're not at the table, sooner or later you'll be on the menu. And mm -hmm. I, that, that, that that would be like my catchiest uh thing I could think of. That 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 basically that the Applebee's menu. The Applebee's menu next to the two for 20. Uh, you know, it's the, the yeah, Emily and I would get the two for 20 back in the day. And wow. the uh, so the uh, yeah, I think that there is a message about agency. We, in fact, hi literally used the word agency and said, I need to exert a survivor first. I feel like, yeah, I know. I, I, uh, I, 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 I'm jealous. I talked about agency all the time, never made air, but I'm glad for high that he got it out there, that it's a great word for, uh, I, I, maybe other people use it as well. I need to think about it. Uh, I have to go, I go, I go check the transcripts, but, mm -hmm. uh, it hopefully popularizes it for the future. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not as clear cut as always have agency. I mean, look, go, let's go back to original flavor Kagayan, uh, where Sarah Lucina wanted to be the president. You know, that's a, that's a, it's a, what is too much agency? What's too much control that you're exerting? And when do you exert that control? Uh, I could see a theme that's about control or a theme that's seizing the moment. You know, there, there's all these possibilities that could crop up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for high now positioning moving forward. Mm -hmm. do, do you see high in a good position to uh, move forward after having Lydia out of the game? I, I, I think, yes, I think that, I mean, my, and my answer is sort of a, not just a specific, Oh, hi is really good at this game. And I, I, I could talk about all the cool things that I thought that he's done so far, uh, but almost for anyone in this game, I think there's a lot of fluidity, which I love. And, and I like, cause I really, I, I would be, uh, I would bet there's a lot of pressure 
on these players in this majority seven uh, to shake things up. The people who wanted to keep it together would be, I'm looking at the original Taku tribe here. And those four are in the majority of this majority. They would want to keep the status quo. Everyone else probably wouldn't. And everyone mm -hmm. else includes some very agency seeking players such as Adrea such as a uh, uh, such as a high and uh you know going down you know going down the list I can I can imagine Romeo not liking I me mean, he was on the outs of that vote you know he wants a way in mm -hmm. yeah um going back to David versus Goliath one of the things that really brought the Davids together was similarly to these players that have come together at this merge that the Davids had a number of advantages and when the Davids were at their strongest in the post-merge game happened to be when uh, you had all of those advantages and sort of coming up with like, okay, how could we use these together against our common opponent? Um, when it, when it fell apart happened to be after said advantages were spent. And I'm not sure if there's any sort of uh, causality there, do you feel like that uh, that we could see potentially like uh, if you are linked by advantages, once advantages are spent, then do you think that that could be where this uh, group of seven is going to fall apart? Totally, totally. I mean, I mean, there's a couple of things that you can pick apart from this scenario you're talking about. What is this uh, Avengers level uh, play with all these advantages even going to look like to begin with? And the possibilities are are are, are frankly a lot. It's I you would really have to diagram them out as to what 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 could go down in a particular vote. It's a it's it's a perilous. Some of these votes could be perilous due to the number of things that are just in play. Um, but after the war afterwards, there's whatever would happen would be seismic. I could only imagine. I mean, it's not like these people who are who have the advantages are in the minority and oh who they're but for the grace of God we're still around. Let's stick together uh, after playing these advantages. This is the majority. Mm -hmm. They're going to be hungry for power within that majority. So uh, I think that there's this is this is why. And again, I I, I really truly have no idea. But I I look at all the factors at play, and I'm like, man, this seven. If this seven sticks together, it will be a testament to the original Taku four. Mm -hmm. I'm also wondering if we could be headed towards maybe a couple of easy votes here, uh, maybe uh, where we sort of like slow things down, where maybe a Chanel and a Tory go home because that with all of these advantages in play, is it almost sort of like a case of mutually assured destruction of that? Hey, if we go, okay, if we go after Jonathan on this vote, for instance, okay, is Mary Ann's idol coming out and playing on Jonathan is our, our like our basically all of the advantages coming out here uh, and really creating a scenario where, okay, uh, the plan is not going to work. Yeah. So what, what, so let's, the, let's break that down. What it looks like a tribal council, because the way the sequential way in which advantages are played, including the shot in the dark, uh, when one comes out, all uh, many will come out. Uh, at least mm -hmm. that's uh, that, that's very likely, unless it's a very choreographed thing where everyone believes that they know the purpose of that advantage. It's one thing if a shot in the dark comes out, uh, that means that they didn't pull off the blind side as well as that they had hoped, and they might suspect that. But as soon as Marianne stands up and plays an idol, then someone else is going to get spooked. And uh, the people who would be spooked would be other people in that alliance. So does that prevent a... Uh, people, this mutually assured destruction prevents people from going for that. Well, the question is, is it total annihilation that occurs as a result? I don't necessarily think that it does, keeping in mind that there will be people in the scenario that are immune, both mm -hmm. in terms of the both in terms of the immunity necklace, but also the advantages that are being played. And so uh so there is there are ways that can be executed where people will say, you know, you know, skin off skin off my nose, it doesn't work. I'm 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 not going home. Uh so there and the ball and, and the and the appetite for ballsy plays is so strong, <laughs> particularly in these shorter seasons. I, I think that they will find a way to make crazy things happen. And I will add on to that. Um, the longer they wait, the more mutually assured the destruction is. You hit advantage again. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, 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 you know, what happens if all these idols are around at six? They're of course, they're all getting played. Of course, they all. 
will. And there will be an advantage again. And so there has to be, a, there's got to be an explosion at some point, would mm-hmm. be my guess. Yeah, it's just it's such an interesting setup right now because uh, you have these uh, two pawns that are on the board in uh, Chanel and Tori and sort of like everybody knows uh, like where they're at. But you also have Romeo, who I thought it was uh, and you mentioned him already, who it was so interesting. That I thought he got left out of the um, entire discussion of uh, the eight and left out of the vote as well. And I guess you could also be looking at him as a pawn on this board, but I feel like that he is the pawn who I could see, you know, reaching all the way to the other end of the board and becoming, you know, uh, far more powerful in the game. Right. I think that metaphor is great. And he, he, the, we, again, a testament to this episode in particular, that we saw how people think about themselves in the game and what their, and what their plays are and what they think about some of the other players from a strategic standpoint. That, that's that's really valuable. So it's possible that he could get uh, – I'm trying to reverse engineer how this came out came about in some way, particularly I think about his relationship with Hi this episode, which yeah. was highlighted – and um, so to speak, there. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I immediately reread it, and the uh, and so and so that's. Uh, but what was interesting about that yeah. was that it almost seemed to have no sort of game yeah. impact. It was right. uh, it was a great it was a great scene about uh, you know, a, 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 like really like a, a you know a spotlight on yeah. Romeo, yeah. um, which you know uh, you love to see, yes, but. I was so surprised that it didn't end up being something that where, you know, then high was sort of like uh, we we saw that, which then goes into, hey, I like uh, Romeo is going to be a number for me is going to be somebody who I can count on in this game. It, it didn't turn into that. It didn't, and this is what I was thinking. I was, I was sort of reverse engineering in my mind. Is that uh, high seems to be kind of pl- the player that is really cultivating options. Who knows? This is going to be he, that he's going to have to make some moves at some point, and wants to make sure he has any as many pieces in play as he can. And this was an obvious and natural thing to to bond with Romeo over. But perhaps he did not see him as a member of this core alliance at this point. He might see this as oh, people don't know that we're close, but. We- I, I'm going to call in this marker later. Now that that's that's something he could be thinking. At least I see that as a plausible scenario. At which point it wouldn't be, oh, let me get every one of my pieces and I'll hoard them in front of me and, and display them for you all to see. This is oh, these are my. He everyone needs that ace in the hole that they want to pull out. I think he might see this Romeo as one of them. Well, it would be so interesting if you know coming into this merge, I had thought that okay, well I, we're going to see Ika. And we're going to see Vati green and blue gang up on Ta- on Taku. Uh, that didn't happen. We ended up with yep. this bigger alliance. But I do think that there is still the possibility where we see uh, the uh, former Ika tribe and the former Vati tribe get together. The interesting thing about all of this is that they both have the squeaky wheel in Chanel and in Tory, and they probably would need their votes if they wanted to make a move against Taku, especially with Marianne, you know, having an extra vote. And I do wonder, I could see a scenario where one or potentially both then gets the chance to then stick it to their original tribe and give up the goods. That's going to be, that, that, that would be a fun scenario. I mean, I also throw out, I mean, Rox Roy's vote for this vote was still a mystery. Was he completely left out? I'm actually, I got I, so I don't know. many questions from people. So, Did what was his vote? And Steven first uh, brought this up on survivor know it alls on Wednesday night that he votes for Lindsay uh, spelling L L Y N Z E. Okay. Was he trying to say Lydia? Uh, or, or, or the other possibility, he thought he was voting for someone to get food or something like that. that you know, like, <laughs> I, 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 he understands the rules no, of no. the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, but it's just like it's the things that, like, you know, people like rumored back in the early seasons of Survivor that people know they were voting for a winner as opposed mm-hmm. to voting yeah. for well, that. I, like, I, the, I know the, a little the, bit about that. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, the So, yeah, I don't know. So, I don't know what he was thinking uh, with that vote. But yeah, that would be funny if he thought if he was vote if he just spelled Lydia so horribly it was accidentally a Lindsay vote. Um, but that's but I uh, can't, unless he yeah. misheard that. Okay, yeah. we're voting for Lids 
Uh, uh yeah. and then he heard Lindsay. Um, he doesn't include a D. Uh, no. for for. I, it's it's a funny theory. It's a funny theory. I don't buy it because why would you spell it in a weird way that's half one word, half the other, and expect Jeff to figure out which one it is? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, but but I mean, I, I'll tell you, if I end up being wrong, it, I, I'm happy because it's hilarious. But the uh, but he but whatever it is, he clearly did not know something that was going on. And, or 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 was told to vote in a strange way. I don't know, but I don't think he would enjoy that. I don't think he would enjoy being the hinky vote thrown in a different direction. That's not the, his game. He's not, not a his hinky game. vote guy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Just like I, I I heard people trying to say that, oh, maybe Chanel voted for Mike because Mike told Chanel to vote for her. I'm like, what are you talking? Mike Mike does not seem like the kind of guy who wants people throwing votes in his direction just because. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, it, the um. And so as a result, like the, uh, so I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought, uh, but, uh, yeah, go on. Sorry. Oh, well, I think maybe, yeah. maybe more believable, you know, Romeo and Tori are going to be the votes here. So Romeo is going to vote for Marianne. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. we also have, uh, Tori is voting for Jonathan. Is it possible John. that Romeo was on board? He thought that, um, Drea was also going to vote for Marianne. And this was like, okay, well, what if Marianne plays her idol? Uh, maybe he's sort of like uh, this is like a split vote situation. I, there's certainly the possibility of split vote. I, that's in the back of my mind that we will hopefully get that question answered at some point. But I, I, I'm, I'm going to go with what the points are on the board right now and just assume that there is a seven um, at the, at this stage. But back to your point, uh, you have these potential leaks or these people who are, let's say, disaffected members of these alliances you got to bring them back in uh i i certainly agree that like even uh, even though uh taku did not take any bullets this any major bullets this round i mean mm -hmm. marianne didn't feel the need to play her idol or anything uh that at, at some point taku's going to start looking scary uh to, to to people and so you bring in like a tory or a uh you bring in a tory or a chanel for those votes, I, I think that's gonna. I think they they they've got to try. You're telling me no one wants to use people for uh, use them use them as votes, and they certainly want to stay. So it, it would it would surprise me if it were just pick pick. But crazier things have happened. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about today was the idea of shield, something that you are uh, you know very familiar with from your Survivor playing. One of the fascinating things I thought from the episode was that High felt like hey. I am going to use Jonathan as a shield. And now we heard Omer earlier in the season. Okay, he's my meat shield and I'm his uh, brain shield here in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly, Hi uh, said, okay, well, Jonathan is, you know, is I, like uh, as, as a fellow like uh, competitor that I need to keep Jonathan in the game to sort of uh, protect me. Now you played, uh, with somebody, I guess maybe one of the closer comps that we have for Jonathan in the mayor of slam town, uh, mm -hmm. John Hennigan. Uh, did you, uh, ever consider this as a uh, John being a shield for you? I, I thought a lot about this and it was particularly true of not just John, but also later in our season with Alec. Because Al, because while John was incredibly athletic, and I think would have started winning a lot of immunities had it not been for the the the, the crazy Brochacho blindside. Uh, the Alec was the one who was perceived as this massive challenge performer, um, and there came a point, um, and this is really relevant. I'm glad you brought up the shield part, uh, where uh, Alec's life is in my hands. Uh, mm -hmm. We we could have flipped to save Alec at then the final ten. Um, which to me was, uh, I, I ultimately, like, as part of me was considering it just because of, hey, I need to keep threats in the game. I need some kind of, quote unquote, shield, even though I didn't really use that word. The the reason I didn't, and I can't say I'm, 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 you know, perfect. I, I went out on day 35, but the, but the. Pretty close comes, in my book. Oh, okay. I'll round up. Uh, but the, uh, but the Alec was a challenge threat in immunity challenges. And this is what I want to sort of dissect the idea of a shield, okay? That there are different kinds of shields. Yes. There are people who, I, I feel like I was a very good shield for other people because I drew a lot of attention. Uh, and also I could frequently be voted for. You know, I, I, I was frequently lot of not immune. Yeah. Got, got a lot of votes. And I was, because I was not immune a lot of the time. But if I was a challenge beast where I'm winning immunities, 
if I'm immune, I am not a shield. By definition, I cannot absorb votes. I cannot take a bullet for someone. That bullet will go around me and go to anyone, whoever the next biggest target is behind me. Mm -hmm. And with Alec, I had that same reasoning. It's like, you know, keeping him in as a threat doesn't make any sense if he sponges up immunities because it doesn't matter if he's a shield, he's immune. And so I am curious what the thought process is when it, when it comes to Jonathan in this way, who is a joy to watch in these challenges. Beyond being very good, it's actually fun to watch him do hilariously strike hilarious feats of strength. Very fun. Uh, like if he's immune, they're just going to vote for the next person after him anyway. So I, I would love to hear from people who talk like this, like people like hi, like what their theory of the case is that, uh, that, that they think that that's a great idea because yes. why? Yeah. Well, it seems that more so than the idea of the traditional shield of like, OK, well, that he as long as he is out there, people are not going to be looking at me. It's right. almost like that cultivating an idea. And, you know, we've sort of seen this more in Big Brother. I think that Big Brother is like a very informative modern day Big Brother in terms of mm. like how this season is playing out, where the challenge competitors seem to have between Jonathan and Mike and High mm -hmm. and Drea. Uh, yeah. And Lindsay uh, have sort of like uh, like gotten together and said, hey, we are the types of people that get targeted after the merge because of our physical prowess. Let's we have the advantages. Let's also protect each other and yeah. go after the players who are likely to band together and say, hey, we're not the people who will win challenges. Let's get yeah. out the more physical players. I love that. Now, that to me makes a lot of sense. And that's what I desperately wanted in my season. But that's a uh, that's an old thing. Uh but the it, when which, it comes which part of it did you want in your season? I, I wanted people who were perceived as threats to all stick together. That's what yes. I wanted. I, I kept pitching that and uh and it just eventually became, hey, you know what we should get up, get rid of? It'll be fun to get rid of Christian. Let's do it again. But uh but that but that's but I love that if they're thinking if they think in that way. That's awesome. And that's, I mean, we, we taught, I, I bring back this old example from your second season with, mm -hmm. uh, w w back when, um, on the Mogo Mogo tribe, yes, whatever, right. Right. That you had a lot of very strong challenge performers, strong players and Kathy and Colby and, and those folks. And they talked about sticking together, but instead they kind of picked each other off. Right. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to see like, like this, like these, these people who are Dean threats, all stick together. Yeah. And if they do that this time, I would love that. I, I, I think it's it's not done enough on this show. Yeah. I, I mean, I've talked about this for a long time in terms of like, I, I would want to target the players who were going to be the goats who are going mm -hmm. to take up the spots. And I, I think if I ever played again, I think I would say, okay, like, 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 let's, okay, let's try to keep the good players together here so that we don't all go after each other for yeah. as long as possible and get out the people who are more of the floaters and the people who are going to be sort of like the zero vote finalists that mm -hmm. people are going to get dragged to the end. Let's try to like uh, keep ourselves safe for a little bit. It's just interesting that this seems to have formed not necessarily about who are the best players. Uh, this seems to be formed a little bit more of, and there's a lot of overlap there mm -hmm. about who are the challenge competitors. Yeah. And there's a lot to be said here about the uh, perception of who these challenge competitors are. I mean, uh, like even in my season, you know, I, sorry, I keep referencing my seat, but like, but, but like the, Christian, yeah, that's what you're yeah. here to do. Yeah, like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, but like with John, like John was a big chat, a big guy, big chat, but he was not actually perceived to be a major challenge threat. Cause it's not like whenever he stepped into a challenge, all of a sudden it was over as it appears to be. And people say in the real time about say Jonathan. And so, and there's a wonderful, the, the, the fluidity of perception is a beautiful thing on the show. And uh, where, especially when it comes to people who are perceived as good players, because that means so many things. So there's an opportunity for people who at this exact moment don't appear to have a lot of agency or don't appear to have a lot of, I should say, political capital at this moment. If they play their cards right and just let the tides turn on the perceived power clusters, whether it be this, uh, perhaps a, a group of, of challenge competitors could be, in, in my opinion, I keep coming back to the Taku tribe uh, that, that just bide their time. But in that time, just try to garner a little bit more influence until the time is right to strike. I, 
this is why I'm so excited about the season at this point because there's a great possibility for that fluidity. Do Taking you this think, all over the place, but yeah, do yeah. you think that this is a reason why Romeo was excluded from the nine? Uh, that it was or from oh, the eight, it would have been the nine with Romeo. Uh, but, that, uh, that Romeo was not perceived as one of the players who would, would have been part of this, uh, like a uh, group coming together, which either has advantages or also, you know, has, you know, the uh, skill sets to not target the players who are the physical threats. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. For whatever reason, he did not fit in the mold of whatever people had in mind when they're putting together that eight, uh, now seven or whatever. And that, and I think that the people on the inside were fine with that because the, the people who are close to him probably want him as a back pocket option. Yeah. Now, that leaves an opportunity for him to come up later and – you know, if he plays his cards right, he can now be per, be be perceived by the rest of the tribe as a powerful player. There, there is certainly. I mean, yeah. we, we look back at the last season. I mean, uh, it, you know, part of it was the editing, but but uh, but Erica won, and very few people saw that coming a mile away, except like Sophie. I think Sophie saw it coming, right? Uh, something like that. But like, but uh, um, but like it, it that clearly there was a percept an undercurrent of perception that was either there and we as the audience couldn't see or was growing and was not perceived by some of the other players going into the finals it's just really interesting that roxroy who wasn't even there uh got in the alliance uh and andrea yeah. when she first sat st sits down with mike she talks about like okay well you know roxroy and romeo i'm, I'm close with I wonder if Roxroy, the recipient of a quote unquote game changing power, if that was sort of like if he got his card punch to get into the alliance because people knew that he was coming back with a power. I think that that's a part of it. I, I, the, the way I read it in the episode is they perceive Roxroy as a straight shooter. And mm. there's a lot at the merge, there is a lot of vouching that happens. Mm. Uh, there's that these alliances, it's not always just people in the right place at the right time that often is spark for the alliance but also you you um it's important that you have a voice in the room for the conversation that you're not in and i remember that for me that was a big deal going into even my season that i think i even said this in my preseason interviews with Ra with, with 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 josh i was said that what's important for me that there is that there's a voice in the room for wherever the conversations are happening of someone who wants me in the alliance and uh and and i and that happened with roxroy i think in part because people are like yeah roxroy i mean he's his his strategy is not is not complex it is not is not uh, it is not uh hyper out there we can count on him and so boom into the lines without even being there we were had been talking about shields and this reminded me of something else that got said in the episode and i wanted to bounce this off of you to get what your reaction to this was marianne walks yes. with tori uh and i believe that uh i think that they were talking about jonathan about uh being a, a shield where tori wanted to potentially uh go after jonathan uh marianne says a problem later is a future shield and I wanted to know if you uh, agreed or disagreed with Mary Ann's thesis. Well, who you take me for, Drea? I'm just going to come in and disagree. So you agree with her. Uh, uh, so let's break it down. Let's break it down. So uh, a problem later is a future shield. And I was trying to remember the exact Sounds of good. This. Sounds, Sounds good. Sounds good. I think that like the tweak that, you know, and by the way, she's, like all of us at the merge, just talking with people at a rapid pace, just learning to know people. Could have been I, on I a think, sugar high from the Applebee's could, brownie. Total, uh, uh, which is totally natural. I think it's like a problem today is a shield tomorrow. It's kind of what I was sort of thinking was what she was going for. That, yes, we perceive Jonathan to go on. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're about to say. You oh, know. yeah. And let me hear it. I want to hear you finish. Yeah. So so a problem today, like my my re, my my recontextualization, that would be like a problem today is a shield tomorrow. Where like the idea I think she's going for is that someone who perceive is seems like a big threat right now. If you keep them around a little longer, you'll be glad that they're there. And that's sort of the the, the central thesis of a shield. And that's how I interpreted what she meant. And I could see that case. It, it would be kind yes. of like 
it would be kind of like if at my in my season when Angelina is beating the drum to get me out because I'm allegedly some kind of big threat, she instead said, you know what, Christian comes across threatening right now due to whatever reasons, but I could use him to take a bullet for me later. That's sort of like the Marianne, re- the, the, the Marianne taking over the body of Angelina in that moment and how I would interpret what she's saying. But that's my interpretation. So I would say that I think that this could be a, um, potentially backwards. Uh, a yeah. problem later is a future shield that I, I almost feel like that I would say, mm-hmm. looking at the game, a, uh, a shield is a problem later. Where yeah, that's interesting. You know, you're looking at, okay, oh, Jonathan's my shield. He's keeping me safe now. Okay, but still, then you are he is keeping you safe now, but you are putting off the inevitable of I mean, that you may need to get rid of him down the road. And the fact the thing that is that is shielding you uh, potentially right now is the very thing that you may not be able to get rid of him later. Yeah, so it would be like a shield today is a problem tomorrow. It's I think that that is a, I think that that's more of the survivor truism. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you think about people that I don't know if Ben uh, Dreebergen was ever used as the shield explicitly in that season, but let's say you did what I mean, they used him as a double agent, I guess. So different thing. Uh, But he got a little too far, a little too deep and people uh, and people regretted it. And like they're a one twist pushed him over the finish line to get to the finals. Yeah. Uh, We don't have to worry about this right now. This is a good this is a good problem to have. This is a shield. This is a distraction. Okay, but then. At the end of the game, uh, and I think we see this a lot with talking about the, the zero vote finalists, these pawns of people like, okay, oh, this is a good, this is a good shield for us. Okay, everybody's talking about them. All of a sudden, they're in the final three, and you are not. Yeah, and I think that a lot of this is, this is the dichotomy of players with threat profile, and presumably someone. Uh, in this case, that you're, that you're concerned about getting too deep in the game because they will win jury votes, in particular. Uh, like I, like I, I flash back to millennials versus Gen X, and I think it's the situation is a lot more complicated than I'm about to describe. But the perception, as put across, put across in the season, that Hannah waited too long to take out David, right? And she got dinged for it. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think it's much more complicated, as you covered in your re- rewatch and your in your 40 season rewatch of Survivor. Sure. But uh, that's that's the perception at times. But like, there's the dichotomy. It's you, you either take him out too soon. And you're exposed, or you leave them too long, and you regret it. And how people fall on this perspective, on 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 this pers- the, on this spectrum, in terms of their fears, is overwhelmingly, in my opinion, shaped by the most recent season they saw. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, like there was a lot of concern that someone could go at, in season 37 that someone could go on a Ben Dreebergen like idol run to the end. Mm-hmm. Now you're watching it much, you know, Ben Dreebergen at that point is a year and a half in your past. You might not be top of mind, but it's in the top of the mind of people playing right then. So I, I'm curious what they're referencing in their mind uh, okay. to build that model. Well, wow. that the most recent season that they would have been watching would have been season 40. And I think yep. that that probably like uh, this mistake was, I, I think, prevalent in season 40, where a lot of players looked at Tony as a shield. OK, mm-hmm. uh, to, like I, like people are going to be worried, uh, worried about Tony and Tony did a good job of then, you know, keeping his own threat level down and mm-hmm. then. Uh, people weren't were that worried about Tony, and uh, ultimately he was a problem later. Yeah, so so it's kind of the opposite of what I'm saying. That they that that, that I, I typically say that the lessons get overlearned on Survivor, but in this case, everyone's defaulting to Shields, and and Shields was a a common discussion in '40. There was Yule was Sophie's nerd shield, as referenced mm-hmm. in, the, in, the, in the premiere of that season. Um, uh, I, I, so maybe I'll, I'll take it in a slightly different tack here, Rob, uh, than that. Uh, one thing that it's easy to fall into on the show, it, it, it's easy to fall into a malaise of not reevaluating where everyone stands in the game. That when you first meet someone or you have a really strong impression of someone that, that just sticks and you don't reevaluate it. But in the meantime, they could be gaining more power. They could they could be lowering their threat level, and you don't even realize it. And that vigilance of assessment is is hard to maintain in a game when you're you can't really think very well because you're you're not eating, and um, and everything just happens so fast. So uh, that I think that maybe an additional danger of banking on someone being voted out later 
is not reassessing how the how the how, how the battle how the 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 battle lines and how the, the the how the battlefield is changing. I know there's so much going on here at the merge right now, but I would love to just go back a couple of weeks uh, because sure. you know this is like the one time we get to really talk about the <laughs> season. Uh, yeah. I would love to just get your thoughts on uh, the uh, big tribal council from a couple of weeks ago when Vati went to tribal council and then. Daniel and Hai were in this standoff about uh, how this was going to go to potentially avoid going to rocks. Uh, did you have any uh, thoughts that you wanted to uh, share with us about all of that? Oh, I love that tribal council. I mean, I, I mean, I just in terms of the drama of it and also what it reveals about some of the subtleties of the game that might be hard to pick up on, but it made it clear. And tribal council, uh, a lot of the time, is a bunch of nonsense that people say. Yes. And it's uh, but but calibrated nonsense. It is intentional narrative nonsense where um people nowadays know that you're not supposed to go in and just tell people who you're voting for and you can't just not say anything. So you have in fact it's an opportunity to just send a message that you want to be sending to everyone else in the tribal council. So uh so again people watching at home and people say I don't agree with the fundamental survivor strategy that that person is espousing at tribal council it doesn't matter. It's nothing to do with the truth of what they're saying. They are trying to send a message that oh I'm saying that this game is about challenge strength we need to have challenge strength that's a message to your people in your tribe who might be strong and tribal cha challenge like don't worry the plan's going forward even if that plan is not going forward right mm -hmm. so um there's a lot of narrative sh uh, framing at, at at tribal council now what that means is is that if you're sitting at tribal council and you don't even understand what the story or the narrative is about you're probably on the outs and you can see that moment in high's face when he's seeing these jocular answers coming from daniel and chanel i believe if i recall the sequence of events he's like this doesn't make any sense i mm. don't understand what they're I, like this is my interpretation of what he, i don't understand what this is even about this tells me that i am not in the loop and i was just told to do something really strange with my vote and so he's like i'm just not going to do that thing so mm -hmm. good read. So and and this is something I talked to Gabby about after the fact. And she said that the, that the tribal council that she went home, that was the tribal council. She had no idea what anyone was talking about. She didn't even like know like what are, what are they saying? And like and, and it's like oh whatever it's weird. And then, then you go home. Then you're done. So that's actually a good uh, a good survivor skill that high displayed that something is off and something that future players can learn from. It's like I don't I don't get this narrative. Yeah, Why are that's people a talking about that? It's a really good point um, that in just my own personal uh, survivor experience and survivor, the Amazon, there's a point where when Alex is going to go home uh, that there were, you know, uh, Alex and, and Jenna and Heidi were on one side, but I wasn't, they thought I was voting with them. I wasn't, I was voting with uh, Matt and Butch and Christy. Uh, and uh, I was asked questions uh, on a couple different occasions and I had to, you know, sort of like uh, have my answers where I was sort of like uh, signaling. I, I needed both groups to think, you know, like to give an answer that was going to be coherent with the story that, you know, both groups were under the impression. Yeah, exactly. So so you have to calibrate that story that makes sense for everyone. Mm -hmm. And um, if this is your first tribal council. Uh, it's easy to get that not quite right, especially when everything got shifted at the last minute because Chanel did not have a vote. So, like, I, I like I, I'll I'll just use an example. So I'll use an example from like my first tribal council. Like, uh, it, it that tribal council, it was between Lyrsa and Jess, and we we're going to blindside Jess as something that came together at the last minute. Oh God, that honestly, that was so exciting. I mean, people probably don't like don't think probably don't think back to David versus Goliath and they're like, oh man, that second episode vote. I sure we had that. a live know it alls that night. Oh, that's right, you remember it. You remember it. But uh, that's, uh, that was the chicken like, has flown the coop. Oh, chicken has flown the coop. And yes, it that was honestly one of my favorite moments from the whole season. I, I felt bad for Jess, but it was so much fun. But in that moment, you felt that you had to get you're you're putting out a narrative, and I'm saying things that are just blatantly untrue, like of that era of that survivor. And I'm saying things like, uh, I because I'm saying the, the narrative is among the tribe is that Lyrsa is less strong in challenges than other people. There, that's and people believe they're just going home. So I'm going to reinforce the idea that. 
like Jeff says, hey, Christian, what decides your vote tonight? It's like, well, Jeff, you know, this is a really long game. And, you know, the, these tribes are really, you know, I can't imagine that we're going to be swapping anytime soon. So we have to keep the tribes strong. Of course we're swapping. We swapped every season for like for, for like 18, like 20 seasons in a row almost. Like <laughs> yeah. the 18. Of course we're swapping. But I say it. And uh, it, just because it perpetuates the narrative that, oh, of course, Lears is going home because it's going to go the opposite way. It's going to be a blind side. And that's what clearly people do at these tribal councils. I am not unique in any way. And, and high picked You're, up. Come on. on. Hour note. So, yeah. <laughs> sorry. I, 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 I'm just saying, but, but, but high picked up on yeah. what that, that sour note, right? So mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, in terms of getting it down to the uh, potential standoff at the rock draw, uh, was, was yeah. there anything uh, interesting that you oh. thought about that? Oh, sure. Uh, we can go on this whole time about that episode. But the, yeah. uh, the, 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 I mean, certainly, I mean, like I'm watching this and, and it was amazing how High and Daniel had completely different perspectives on how that was going to go. Yeah. Daniel saw it as, look, this is a first vote. Let's not go home. You know, it's not an existential, let's not turn this into an existential crisis. Let's not go to rocks. Let's just make a decision here. That's the way it came across. Whereas High saw it as an existential crisis for him. And it's like, what are you talking about? I was about to be left out of this vote and I was about to be blindsided. And you want me to get rid of just, let's just get rid of my ally? No, mm -hmm. I have, I, I had a lot more to lose. And as a result, and the way Daniel opened the conversation, Daniel talked about this in his exit interview. He didn't view it as a negotiation and yet it very quickly became one. So mm -hmm. the power shift in that tribal was great. Uh, it's just, it, it was so fun. Okay, well, this actually ties in nicely to a bunch of things that happened in uh, this past episode where th did it surprise you that High, who multiple times in the episode talked about it, like he opened up conversations and said, okay, well, Lydia is my person. Lydia is my number one. We and, and we and it was like common knowledge. Okay, he went to rocks for her that mm -hmm. were, were you surprised that he was, you know, ultimately like landed on a decision where um he ends up writing her name down. Yeah, I, I think that uh, it was surprising to me in the episode, but it's informative in that it says some. It should say something to the other players what High is willing to do to win. And I think most people are willing to do a lot to win on Survivor, but that it's very clear that uh, that that High is he's game and hard. I mean, uh, and it's. And I think that it, 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 what it risks is people realizing it. And I think that um, one thing that is important to remember it, 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 that you got to take certain signals very seriously from people on the show. Um, in real life, it's tempting to write off certain little things as, oh, that's just that person had a bad day or this person said this thing weird just because it, it, it means nothing. But you have to take it seriously, especially on Survivor, because you have so little data about these people. So if you see someone like that, like, oh, they're my number one, I'll take a bullet for them, now they're gone. Careful believing what they say, even if they seem very sincere about it in the context of this game. In talking about how things are going at Tribal Council and the conversation flow at Tribal Council, I thought it was very interesting that we got that moment between Drea and Marianne, who ultimately are on the same page. They are voting together. What do you think was uh, the reason for it? that you would think that uh, that both of them and Marianne certainly seemed like she was trying to be very agreeable there? Um, that I, I thought it was odd. Do you feel like was that theater on Drea's part potentially to make it seem like that there were, there there was a wedge potentially between them? I don't think so. I don't think so because uh, if that were the case, let's let's take that case and, and break it apart. Uh, break break uh, break it down. That let's say she, uh, that Drea got the idea to. I need to make it look like there's disagreement. That there's no big alliance. So I'm going to pick a fight with Marianne. Clearly, she didn't tell Marianne, mm -hmm. and that's a that's a, a curious choice to do something to, to like to blindside your alliance member with a disagreement. I think that the, the again to take a little Occam's razor to this and slice off this thing. I mean, what makes the most sense to me is that Drea uh, is very bright. She picked up. Uh, she picked up on on the twist. What the twist was going to be, uh, but she's very serious in what she thinks is right and what she thinks is wrong in terms of things being correct. Uh, and I think she heard this and she's like, "No," nah. like like in, 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 that, in that moment, and she just reacted. 
And you can see Marianne clearly reacts. I mean, imagine you're having a conversation that you don't expect there to be a disagreement. And all of a sudden I say to you, Rob, that's completely wrong. And you're like, uh, I, I, I mean, uh, we're, we're in agreement, right? That's, that's the reaction I saw from Marianne. So if it was a ruse, I don't think Marianne was in on it. So that would make it a curious choice. Mm -hmm. So do you just feel like that Drea felt like it was very important to, you know, establish how she was feeling at this particular tribal council? Or she did she you think that maybe that she felt like that Marianne was putting words in her mouth? I, I, I try to remember the actual thing that what was the thing that Marianne had yeah, said. Yeah, so uh, I tried to pay attention to it today. So I, I think that basically there was some the 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 question was about uh, you know, how are you determining uh who are you going to vote for uh what is the theme of the vote uh was the question that jeff had mm -hmm. asked and marianne was talking about like well you know it's a little bit about you know the people that you can work with now versus you know uh the people that you are going to work with later uh mm -hmm. and that's uh where drea said that that's not how she saw the vote at all Interesting. Uh, that's a uh, now. Now this could be maybe an alternate hypothesis here is that she, that Drea felt the need to push a different narrative uh, at that tribal council. Like maybe there was disagreement just in that moment. Marianne says a thing, and Drea does not see it as on theme with the the, the tribal narrative she's trying to push. And maybe saw it as an opportunity needed to correct Marianne. And Marianne was probably giving. Uh, you know, a, a typical survivor is like a blank kind of answer or like, you know, all the many multitudes of ways that you can dissect and cross section the game. You pick one and you give it to Jeff and she and Marion happened to ha pick one that Drea did not want pushed at tribal council. That's another hypothesis. OK. Shipwheel Island uh, returned in season 42. How do you feel about uh, the prisoner's dilemma being back uh, as a big part of the season? So the prisoner's dilemma, I, one thing I like that they changed from last season is that last season it was always three people, if I recall, who went to the Shipwheel Island. Is it wasn't true, always uh, okay. that we we had, that was it, just like in this oh, season, it, it, right. that it was the first episode. And then we also right. had a summit, which was with three people, which they Got had uh, another one. But then uh, we saw where Evie and Deshaun went and then also people. Liana yeah. and Shan went. And it Got was two it. People. Got it. It, so I, I I I like the fact that finally we got the option where they where they where they lost their vote. I was worried that would never happen, and, and I forgot that that Evie and uh, and Deshaun were all there alone. And the in addition to, to the other scenarios, but I like that the two people, as opposed to the three people, for that scenario, because in the three people you only need one person to take a bullet, and by mm -hmm. take a bullet you mean don't get an advantage. Again, the bullet is not uh, is is not strong enough for this this prisoner's dilemma there needs to that when you go on this journey there needs to be an actual downside if the other person takes a risk and you do not uh i, I think that's one of the things that needs to, that needs to be the case for this to work better but i like it better with two people because i think it's more likely you will get a miscommunication among two people where uh where where like because they uh, um as opposed to in a, in a, in the three tribe for three person format, only one person has to say, "I need my vote tonight," and everyone else is free to get an extra vote. I think one of the things that's been a big miss in the Shipwheel Island, we have not gotten the scenario that I think that the producers, when we talk about like what are the producers hoping for, that yeah. we have not gotten, I believe, one time where somebody is trying to hoodwink the other person at yeah. like the one time that we got that result with Chanel and Omer. It was a misunderstanding more so than anything. And I mean, that was the one time that we that we got that desired yeah. result. Um, we have haven't gotten that way. I think what they want is like, hey, I'm not really going to risk my vote like uh, like uh, uh, we better both play it safe. Uh, and then the person, aha, I'm going to I'm going to steal the vote from the other person. Again, I don't know how you would necessarily do that. I think you'd have to sort of like um make them feel like you were definitely going to risk your vote uh, and then actually like uh, do it. I don't know how exactly you would hoodwink them, but I got the sense that they, that they wanted people to try to bluff the other person off going for it and then go for it. Well, the payout. I mean, we talked about this on our last. I mean, when we met last uh, last season together, Rob. That the payout structure needs four different payouts instead of three. Currently, there are three. And just in terms of just have there to be an incentive at all. 
for someone to like to be risking this vote and uh, and trying to screw someone over is that like it, it like it's not just the fact that oh I could be getting an advantage but I'm not. You also like like if the like you, you, there's no protect there's no protect option in the real prisoner's dilemma. Uh, like, the, like there's, there's nothing that really protects you because if you try to protect your vote, take the safe option and you are screwed, then you get a far worse penalty. And so that creates more conflict and it makes it a scarier, uh, a scarier notion. And, um, and I think, it, and I, I don't know what the payout structure should be exactly, but there needs to be a different one in order for it to really resonate. Uh, I'm glad we got at least some disagreement, but you're right. No one really has said, I'm going to, I'm, I, I'm going to screw screw the other person over. So I think there needs to be stronger incentives and that needs to be penalties or else they won't do it. Okay. And we'll see in season 43 if they end up uh, like continuing to go in this direction or if they have like completely new stuff or if we'll continue to see this same sort of format where we're going to see a bunch of stuff between Survivor 43 and 44 that's like uh, similar stuff with two new groups uh, going through the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And I and I, I think that'll be interesting. So I hope that uh, I, I, I so like just workshopping this in my head, the ship wheel island, where there are four payouts, I know it's more complicated, that's a downside you want simplicity generally in your, in your mechanics. Um, but like, if you both so you basically have two options, you have the trust and the betray. Okay. And uh, if you both trust, you both get a small payout, or I think what would be more fun is that you both just get nothing. He's like, okay, we trust each other. We don't get, you know, we, 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 you know, we don't get screwed. Okay. Um, whereas if you both betray each other, uh, you both lose your vote. Uh, but if you, but if you uh, betray the other person, maybe you get an idol, you get an extra vote, but something really bad has to happen to the other person like they lose their vote to the merge or something crazy like that that would be really bad I, i'd hate that for people but at the same time they already have that threat they have that threat in the beware advantage you lose your vote to the merge unless you convince everyone else to find unless everyone else finds the idol so like if they're going to do the prisoner's dilemma uh just check out the wikipedia article on it it has a nice explain explanation of the payout system it, it's important it's important Christian, I would love to hear uh, from your notes. Uh, what are some other things that uh, were very interesting to you from this week's episode? Oh, from this week's episode. Oh gosh, let's let's go to my to my list here. Uh, so, what? Well, one thing I, I'll point out is that the the gender balance of this season right now is like completely even across like all the tribes across all the across all going the into this week yeah. going, going into this week of course yes, yeah it was wild that we people. had four 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 six six like uh yes. incredible it's a, it, yeah, so and 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 it got me thinking and i was and i was looking i was just trying to look at the breakdown and something that uh whenever you are at the mat chat okay and you there's a random draw i always pay attention to that random draw because sometimes there are different types of random yeah. draws there are ones where uh, and, and some, sometimes the random draw is inherently gender balanced. And this happens a lot, a lot of tribe swaps where you are, there are two trays of like of boxes to pick that have buffs and one is for men and one is for women. And that ensures a certain breakdown of gender balance on each tribe. And I was, and I was looking at the breakdown of who was on each of the challenges, uh, the challenge teams this time. And you'll have to correct me, but I'm pretty sure because there were, it was it was uh, ten people are, were in the challenge, and it was three, two, two, three, men, women, women, men. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, that's about as even breakdown as you could get. Was it one of those uh, random draws where you had two different trays? I went back and looked at the footage. It wasn't. It was actually just one bag. Everyone was grabbing rocks out of. You can actually see in the shot men and women grabbing from the same bag. So I, I so I saw it as an opportunity to bring up that sometimes that that. that something you can track throughout most of the show's history is that they care a lot about having gender balanced tribes and having gender balanced swaps. Mm -hmm. And, and that is by design. And I thought this is an interesting time to, to bring up, to bring, to bring up that fact. I mean, look, and people sometimes say, Hey, you know, I like seasons that have two tribes, but 20 is too many people. We should only have 18 maybe right. instead of 16, but odd number of people only starting tribe. They can have equal number of men and women, and they'll, they'll rarely, rarely will they ever do that. I think like they did that on like season third, uh, season twenty nine, but that's because So and Do mm -hmm. dropped out 
as people at the last minute. Anyway, yeah. I just thought that was interesting. I, I don't know if people knew I, that. I think also Survivor, uh, The Edge of Extinction, I think also uh, yes. was, was uh, this, the same idea. Exactly. Same yes. Yeah. So, right. So very, very rarely. So, uh, so anyway, I, so I was, so I kind of, I was breaking down the episode. I was thinking about, uh, about, about that. Um, and so, uh, so, so track that in future seasons. And, um, it, like when you look at the swaps, that's how, it, that's how it works out. And I think that that's a, that that's always an interesting choice that, that they make. Um, I, I not really to like to go on there is just a note that I had. Um, I also want to talk about these crazy twists that they came up coming up with okay uh mm -hmm. we got we got the um uh we've got the the matt chat twists now mm -hmm. where now you have to say a phrase same as last season right um it made me think that there isn't a uh that that they are me they are mechanizing more elements of the game than they ever have before like things that are just part of the game. Like, oh, when you walk into a challenge, you stand on a mat, you talk to Jeff. It's called Mat Chat. Well, guess what? Now it's a game mechanic. Mm -hmm. So that's been mechanized. Uh, there used to be, you know, you would go up and you would cast your vote at tribal council. You go up to the voting urn, you cast a vote. Well, now it's part of kind of a game mechanic. Now you can also insert in secret an idle nullifier or or do a shot in the dark. Now it's a part, now it's a game mechanic. I'm starting to, to suspect that they're weaponizing more and more all of these little things of Survivor that could now become game mechanics. If you are playing the game as a new player, think about what are all the things that are happening that are seemingly inconsequential that maybe can now become game mechanics. Mm -hmm. I mean, this I, I think that Adam certainly opened the door trying to find the idol at Tribal Council. And I, I think that like these things are connected where, you know, that mm -hmm. that's also part of like you could just be sitting at Tribal Council. Uh, yes. And then also, you know, somebody could be somebody could be going for an idol. You could be at the mat and activating an idol. So I think every aspect of the game. I think that, you know, this is a situation where something could, you know, potentially be, you know, part of like uh, gaining, losing advantages. Got it. Yeah, so, yeah. And I think that uh, Adam immediately comes to mind for that because he's like to him, that's just a natural progression of things that like, oh, well, they, they hide idols in challenges now. You know, why wouldn't they hide it at, you know, at, at tribal council? And apparently they did it in one of the many four, one of the, one of the foreign versions of Survivor, right? It's mm -hmm. one of the things that he had seen. So Survivor South but, Africa. Yeah. So South Africa. Yeah. Thank you. And so, uh, so the Palessa the, Idol. Is that what it's called? Palessa? The, that was the woman's name. Uh, that, oh, oh, that, oh, that found it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so that's, uh, so I, I'm wanting, wondering what other things can they mechanize? Uh, to I mean the little things like like uh you know so there's the mat chat you walk in on a mat and um, um and then you then you go then then you go then you go and have your tribal council um I mean maybe they'll walk to tribal council like I, I normally that's just an overhead aerial shot they give us of, of us walking to tribal council but like I'm trying to think what else they can weapon I, I would think mechanize. not there's because that, that I feel like that that is not a time that is live and I think that no. like if you we're sort of like uh, I think the players would sort of like uh, but this is weird. Well, why are we like uh, why are we being filmed like doing this thing that we wouldn't normally yes. be being filmed doing? Um, yeah. So yeah, that, I think that that is probably um, no, it's not that one. I was trying to think of what they would be and like because I mean I was surprised like oh now the mat chat is the thing you can say a thing at the mat chat. Um, you know I wonder if could there be secret words at tribal council. I mean, tribal council is a big event. Yeah, uh, no, I've I've thought about that. Where I, and I, I wonder if maybe in the future seasons, if it's not going to be secret words, but sort of like uh, maybe like a stunt or something that you have to do, or you know, uh, wear a certain like uh, you know, wear the rice container uh, as a hat to tribal mm -hmm. council, or <laughs> yeah. you know, do do something that's odd and potentially like uh, you know, with with another person but not necessarily like a phrase. Cause I think that people are definitely going to be on the lookout for wacky yeah. phrases. I, I, I think that that's going to be the case. I mean, and this is honestly a progression of the twist that they've done in the past, Rob. I mean, going back to when they hid the idol on the rice container in like Philippines or when, or, or I should go back further to China when like, Oh, here's just a random thing around camp. Oh, that is an idol or in heroes versus healers hustlers. Then you, and you had a uh, 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 Lauren, had to pick up a seashell 
at a challenge and that was half of an idol or something. Mm -hmm. And so like, uh, so like this is sort of a progression, like get, or, or like, or finding idols in, in a challenge, try to put people in awkward situations where they have to, they could get caught. Do you think that this is a good note for the, I know this isn't the survivor Academy, but for survivor 43 players, should you be more observant of what the other players are saying or doing? And if somebody is doing something odd, that potentially uh, they should be a little bit more on your radar. Absolutely. I mean, it's hard to be hyper vigilant uh, in in the game. It really is. But uh, I think that's good good advice in general on Survivor. If anyone does something a little out of character or a little odd, don't just write it off. At least mark it down in your mind. Like it it, it, it could be a twist thing where they said something odd. And uh, and I should say, uh, whenever says anyone says anything odd at a match chat. It's remembered. I mean, especially in the pre-merge, you know nothing about these people. Like you just, but all except what they said at the mat chat. That's all you know. Yeah. I remember all these things that Alex said, and which actually were all the same things. He would be like, he would start answering Jeff's question, and he would go, "Uh, yeah." And that's all. Mm -hmm. That's how he, and that was a joke back at camp. That's like, oh, Alex is the oh uh, yeah guy. And um, so so if someone says anything really weird, I mean, what else you got to talk about all day other than like. What is Marianne talking about with bunny rabbits? Uh, she's she's not a duck, or, you know. So it's it, that stuff will stand out, right? I spoke with Xander a few weeks ago, and he talked about how that he felt like that that really affected it, it, the perception other players had about him in the game was that mm. they thought he was kind of like this stoner guy talking about butterflies and weird stuff, and that when they met him, that people had like a sort of like a you know. Uh, I was going to say uh, pre-baked uh, notions, but uh, <laughs> not, they, 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 they thought of him as like a certain kind of person. And, and uh, he felt like that, that did have an impact in his game. Yeah. So I think that, uh, so uh, it, it, it's interesting that it has such a lasting effect on people's uh, impre impressions of the game. And maybe that's a reason to maybe not do that particular thing. Um, Cause you don't want to hurt people's games unnecessarily. Uh, but that said, especially when they had to do it, like he had the, that, the, I mean, we talk, we talk about the rule that uh, the, according to the, pay, the parchment, they're supposed to, they need to say it at the mat chat was the mm -hmm. way it was written on the pay parchment, which I think they kind of let slide at one point for, for, uh, for Mike or something. Right. Is that the, is that, is that the th thinking right yeah, now? Yeah. It's been a little bit uh, like uh tricky to like figure out like exactly what happened. It seemed like uh, that Marianne seems to be under the impression uh, that, or at least is saying it every single time Mike is saying it when he feels like it. Yeah. So it seems like that there was maybe some inconsistency in what uh, the survivor yeah. players are being told, which I think right. I do you would want to be able to uh, have all the players operating with the same rules right sure of course and, and and that's just frankly it's a byproduct when the rules become more complicated these things become much less clear cut i mean you you flash back to like uh back when when, when the rules for like started to get complicated i would say once you had steal of votes and mm -hmm. extra votes mm -hmm. when do they apply do they apply before or after the revote well someone's got to make that call and that call matters a lot we, we 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 talked about uh, one of the votes. Uh, I think one of the votes bet last season with uh, with post merge with Xander and Ev I think it was the vote Evie went home. There was a chance that with the re with the extra vote, it could have been used to flip two people to now have a majority in a tribe of six because yeah. of the revote rules. And someone at someone at some point probably just made a call it's like, "Does it work with the revote?" Oh yeah, sure. But that has that has consequences. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. Christian, still no live tribal council uh, this season. Yeah, I've always been skeptical of the live tribal councils, but uh, like uh, uh, just from back and I, 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 maybe maybe it's the old school nature of me, Rob. You know, old, old soul. I remember. Yes. I I re at least maybe that, that I'm still living that era where uh, where everything at tribal council is theater. Everything is always pre planned, but that is obviously not always the case. That's clear. I think Edge of Extinction. I think was the perhaps one of the big coming out parties for the live tribal right, council right um yeah I, I mean that's you know you, you julie jumping ship uh cr chaos created over julia um mm -hmm. but i i i've i i've always thought that those true live tribals were were rare but where will they come into play when when extra votes when vote steals are flying around when mm -hmm. votes are stolen things happen before tribal that shift up the game, then um, that's that's one that's one of the many things that will set off a live tribal. Uh, but a lot of these advantages, there are no current vote steals in play. 
Uh, votes field yet. Be play- not yet. Not yet. Uh, amulet, perhaps if one of them gets eliminated, the amulet will. Um, but the idols are things played after the vote. Extra votes are played in secret. So none of these advantages are one that would stoke currently a live tribal. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now you're, you're now you're relying upon people saying something odd. Like, like high could have potentially turned his thing into a live tribal. Instead, I think he did a smarter thing, which was to vote in secret. And then Daniel is all of a sudden blindsided and high has the upper hand in the post vote negotiations. What do you think about the shot in the dark here in its second time out? So the, so people have used it. No one has been, has anyone, no one's been safe yet, right? Nobody has never. I mean, it's you don't want to be results oriented based upon a metaphorical dice roll, right. uh, but no one has actually hit. I do, I do think there is something to um, to the idea of a shot in the dark because then it guarantees that people want to blindside people. To me, that is a minor benefit because this is season forty, whatever of Survivor. Every one already wants to blindside people. It's not like they need uh, encouragement. Um, I think what it it potentially saves is it saves the people like Elaine. Like remember Elaine in thirty nine season thirty nine, she went out in seventh place. It's a great place to go out, honestly, the best place. But the, uh, the best. yeah, 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 definitely the best place. And the she knew, she, but she knew it. I, I she knew she was going home. You could tell by her speeching. And there's no and so like that, and and that there are a few people left in the game. She right. of course would have played her shot in the dark at that point, and so that would have given her a chance. I think it's designed to save someone like Elena. Yeah, and I think that it. We've talked about this, uh, you know, uh, a lot. I think maybe a little bit more last season, but in in this season, what's been interesting is that there were always two targets for all of these different tribes. So the shot in the dark really was not that important for many of uh, the players where that it was like for Ika at the first vote, it's like, well, uh, like Zach could play it, but we'll just vote out Tori, you know, uh, yeah. Swathi could, pl- uh, could play it, but we'll vote out. We'll vote out Tori, uh, you know, uh, Mar- Mariah c- could play it, but we'll vote out Marianne. So uh, in the Elaine circumstance that you mentioned, where it's the mm-hmm. final seven and right. she is the only person on her team, you know, you get to where, People are going to say, well, what what if it does hit? OK, mm-hmm. now Elaine's one vote. And this came up in the vote with Chanel last week where she wrote down Mike's name, uh, where so who from the majority is going to potentially write a name down and what name yeah. will they write down? And does that potentially open the door for an Elaine even more as the majority starts to talk about? Who is going to be that person that, that they're going to put votes on? Do the, now, do you have to put two votes on people because when, because you don't want it to go to it? Uh, uh, I, I guess you'd probably get away with one uh, and then just vote a, about a lane on the tiebreaker. But you know, potentially that okay. Now, are people getting paranoid? Is somebody writing my name down? Uh, and sort of like opens up the door for maybe like a little bit more excitement instead of such like a uh, clear cut tribal council. But this is a great segue back to last mm. week where we talked about Chanel wrote down Mike's name, Mike's name because she wanted to potentially uh, protect herself. I think that she was maybe thinking that there were going to be three votes for Daniel and that mm-hmm. had Daniel played his shot in the dark. Her one vote for Mike would have uh, potentially saved the day. Now for Chanel this week that I think that in hindsight, and again, I don't want to be all results oriented. She did not need to do it, but it sure. seemed like that that really opened up a a rift with Mike where, you know, hi, I, I think, and Lydia already had felt some type of way about Chanel, but we saw Mike th- saying, you know, I, I, I can never trust her. Uh, he threw her under the bus to Drea as soon mm-hmm. as he had the chance. Um, do you think that what was the risk not worth the reward? So uh, for 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 her to do that move, I mean, certainly, it, like like what we saw uh, at the merge uh, was that. Or did she write the wrong name down? Oh, I, I, I mean, what, what were the other options? She could have written Lydia. Hi, Lydia. Yeah, she could have written down Lydia. Um, yeah, I mean, certainly Mike is not the kind of guy that seems to just to, to be able to understand that a vote is just a vote. And it was just for my own sake. Clearly, I, 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 I but like I, sort of back to the shot in the dark twist itself. 
that's what you kind of hope to eke out of it, that it creates drama where there wasn't drama before. What is the anticipated excess drama you get from this mechanic? And what is the cost? Like, like what is, what is, what, you know, you know, Medicine is, for instance, is a is all is, is all a risk benefit. Uh, uh, you know, first do no harm, but it's a risk benefit. Uh, you know, to ev to every medical decision you make, there's a risk benefit to every production decision that survivor makes. And so the benefit is you would eke out these. There's drama as a result of the shot in the dark that would otherwise had not been there. I think that is clear to say from mm -hmm. that. And there's also as yet unforeseen, perhaps later crazy advantage get in like shenanigans that we have yet yet seen in the one season that we've had this in full now a season and a half right so yeah. maybe it creates craziness the cost to me is the complexity of the game i am watching this season and i'm like Oh yeah, I forgot about Shot in the Dark. <laughs> Almost every tribal council it comes up like, oh yeah, that's right, Shot in the Dark. That's uh, maybe we'll get used to it. Maybe we'll get used to it now. It's like in the back of our brains, but it's not something that's like visual that we really understand as people watching watching the show. Yeah. Whereas votes were like, okay, one person equals one vote. Oh, that that side's bigger than that side. You know, well, it, we're right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Who doesn't have a vote and who has two votes? Uh, but that's. That's yeah. another thing, but uh, that's but yeah, go on. Sorry, but yeah. but with Chanel from last week, I think that uh, like it, it certainly it was impressive that she was like oh. uh, you know, fourth dimensionally thinking about okay, like like okay, if I could do this, but like it wasn't a sure thing that Daniel was going to play the shot in the dark, and yeah. then if he even if he did, it's only that sixteen point six 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 percent chance. So I don't know like uh the probabilities like you do. Uh, but like, if it's only, maybe it was like a, you know, 50% chance or 60% chance he was going to do it. Then on top of yeah. that, um, you know, I, I just, uh, I, and, and I misread this myself because I felt like, okay, coming into the merge, they're going to need her number. Uh, right. it's not going to matter if Mike is going to be uh, mad at her because, mm -hmm. Hey, they're going to want to preserve their four, but it turns out that Mike actually, uh, like th this made them feel like Chanel was more expendable. Because she did that, yeah. So I was I was analyzing from a mechanics perspective, but let me let me give Chanel her credit. That is hard to put together on the island. I mean, maybe if you're sitting at home with a piece of paper and with, with a full belly, you can figure it out. But that's I gotta I gotta give her credit that she worked out that scenario. Now, let's actually work out the probability. So that, that in order for that to happen, two things would have to be true. She would have to assume that all the votes would go on Daniel, right? And yes. um, which which ended up being a false assumption, but uh, but like it, it, so that there's that would have to be true, and she would have had to have been told that they were all going on Daniel. It said mm -hmm. some votes went to her as part of a split vote. What was the what was the what was the vote? It was two there? two one. Yeah, two two one. So two two one. So that means two votes went to her, two votes went to Daniel. Then the revote, Daniel went home. Right. So uh, so clearly she was lied to and said, "Don't worry, it's Daniel." And there was and um. Which I, I mean, I it was not a lie, but they did, you know, they did cover their themselves yes. and make sure that uh, sure. she could not uh, ultimately like, uh, you know, in, in case Daniel did play his idol, uh, she was still going to go home. Yeah. So let me let me let me just teleport into, into, into Chanel's situation right here. And like uh, and, and this may or may not work, but like the natural follow up question is actually being told, don't worry, it's Daniel We're reporting the votes on Daniel. And she clearly has a shot in the dark in her mind. She should say, hey, OK, uh, that sounds good to me. What do you think about the shot in the dark and see how they respond? Mm -hmm. And my guess is that in the situation, they dismiss it. Oh, don't worry. It's not a big deal. Okay. Now that said, I'm guaranteed they did think about the shot in the dark. And why did they think it's a big deal? It's because they're splitting the votes on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why. So she could just probably deduce uh, uh, in this hypothetical scenario that, if, uh, that right. you could deduce that the votes are being split. Uh, I was guilty of this myself in my own season, and I think I, I covered up I covered it up decently well. But there, uh, after um, uh, after we had we we had voted out Dan, and all of a sudden uh, 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 Alec was in the hot seat. This is uh, post the the big crazy uh, immunity challenge and at the final ten. Alec is about to be voted out. It's going to be a unanimous vote on Alec, right? And Angelina has now defected to the David side and she's working with mm -hmm. Carl particularly and others. The Godfather. And she, yes. She's a Godfather. And Angelina comes up to me. She's like, Christian. Okay. Alec could have an idol. Uh, and uh, so we, here's the split vote plan we should do. She's telling me the split vote plan that we should do at the, at the tribal council. Okay. I mean, but I have the idol. 
I know where the idols are at that point, at least in my, and I didn't know da- da- that, that uh, at, at some point um, uh, uh, Nick was going to pick up one as well. So I know he doesn't have an idol. Nick, uh, Alec doesn't have an idol. So I'm like splitting the votes is relevant to me. In fact, it's a risk. So I don't want to do it. So what I had to do was go to the Davids. And I, what, what I said was, Angelina, that is an excellent point. I'm going to go talk to the other Davids and see if we can bet marshal up this split vote plan, which I knew I was going to marshal up the split vote plan. But the, mm-hmm. uh, the, and so it come back. It's like, I'm sorry. It doesn't work. I really don't think he has the idol. Now, Angelina could have picked up on the, my, on the fact that the Davids did not care what mm-hmm. happened, what, what happened to Alec and deduce the fact that we must have the idol. And, and maybe she did or maybe she didn't. But that's something she could have figured out from what we did. And mm-hmm. maybe that's a way to that's that informed deduction. Is, is is something that uh, can be a powerful tool on Survivor. Yeah. All right, Christian, what else did you pick up from this ah, uh, two-hour episode? Yes. Lots of things. So uh, let's pick, let's pick up with Chanel again in the post in the in the post uh, um, in the post merge. Um, Chanel had uh, went to the Shipwheel Island with Omer, and Omar didn't Omer didn't have a vote. Speaking yeah. of informed deduction here, I was actually curious how what was going to happen with Omer. Was he going to figure out? Does he not have a vote? And now let's talk with Emily about this. Like, do you think someone's going to tell him? A lot of people know they doesn't have a vote. Someone might tell him, and thankfully, someone did. Mm-hmm. And he correctly deduced is like, hey, I, I, I need to remember the timeline here, but that Chanel did not tell him at the merge. If she did, we didn't see in didn't the see merge it. episode. Yeah. Right. If, yeah, exactly. Or at least based and on the way he, that Omer... he found out before she told him if she did tell him. Right. Exactly. So based upon what he told us in confessional, she did not come up and tell him in reconnoiter. Like, oh, by the way, you have no vote. <laughs> it's, it's like, a, mm-hmm. um, and, and, and that's a, like, I over correctly is like, I can't trust Chanel right now, at least not this mm-hmm. stage. Um, so I, I thought that, so that was one of the many fascinating reads <laughs> after the, after the, the, the non merge here of what was going on. So, uh, so th- there was, there was that happening. Um, and another way in which getting people together, I, I the yeah. thing I like about Shipwheel Island is it gets people alone together to talk, mm-hmm. and sometimes and, and it leads to highly variable results. Uh, Shipwheel Island itself, I, I maintain we need to change the payout system, but you get different results. You know, in in that one, you had Omer and Chanel seemingly getting along, and but something happens that she, that that you know clearly they were mis- they miscommunicated. Um, then you had uh, uh, our, our, our good friend Lydia, mm-hmm. uh, who was who, who went with Roxroy and got what nothing. Nothing. Like, it was like, it was an incredibly awkward conversation, which she confirmed in her exit interview. Yes, yes. That tells you that tells you something about how Roxroy operates. Roxroy is going to zip his lid. Is is, is going to zip it. He's not going to give up anything. He doesn't have to. And he's like, I don't need to tell you anything. <laughs> and so, and like that, that told me something. And um, so I so it's another example of how the putting people together with some alone time, kind of like the old exile Island days mm-hmm. uh, or whatever they, they would sometimes do, or like those kinds of things uh, can really benefit the game. Yeah. That's a very good point that the ship of Island, like the actual, like uh, going to the Island with each other has like borne a lot more fruit than anything that's come out of the, uh, you know, prisoner dilemmas. Uh, really the only interesting one that we've had in two seasons of this happened yes. when there was a misunderstanding between Chanel and Omer. And that I, I think that that misunderstanding was based on that. They, they hit it off so well that yeah. I think Chanel thought like, Oh, Omer knows that, uh, you know, this is an important vote for me. He's not, he's going to let me have the thing because he knows this yeah. is a big, uh, a big tribal council we have tonight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, that's, it says, it says a lot. And, 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 those are the emergent situations I love on the show. Uh, that like that the, the the politics of not telling someone some information that clearly you'd want to tell them, and that tells Omer a lot about the intentions or at least the attitudes of Chanel or her priorities. Or it clearly wasn't that high of a priority in uh, to, to Chanel to go up and tell Omer, and Omer took offense to that. That's interesting. Um, mm-hmm. So. Uh, other other things that happened on on the episode, I I, I do want to talk a bit of, uh, about about Jonathan. That's yes. uh, that that uh, that uh, it's such a delight to watch him in the challenges. I know there are lots there are lots of strong co- challenge competitors, but there's just something even the way it's shot, how he enters the challenge, like oh here comes Jonathan, and then it zips through the challenge, 
And I really, I really, I thought at this point, it's like, okay, this is Swan. Jonathan's going home. Jonathan's going home this episode. The hour glass twist is coming. He's toast. It looked uh, bleak at one point. Yeah. And uh, so it, it was, it was delightful to see it not happen. Um, as much mm-hmm. as I, I, I too am enter- entertained by Lydia on Twitter, on, among other things. Uh, the, but well, yeah, it's a on. problem in this season that they yeah. cast a, a cast that's too likable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and I and I'd say um, what I liked now, I got a lot more of were the relationships between the characters, mm-hmm. like putting Mike and Jonathan together. That was a nice scene. Let's let's actually go to Mike. I, I, I talked a little bit about Jonathan before. Yeah, Mike, he is he's such a likable presence that it seems like people just want to work with him yeah. when they come around. That's that, like that. I didn't that didn't click. Until all of a sudden, he is now with all these other people that he hadn't met before. He's look, he's clicking with Jonathan. I, I had a few other uh, other people that he was. And well, he's funny. So yeah, anyway, go on. No, he he is uh, really just uh, so great and such a great social game. I, I don't know if there is a survivor comp that you could uh, make for him. Did, that, is there anybody that comes your to your mind that would be you know a, a fair Mike comparison? So like a so a a really I mean I mean I'll this uh, this might be hyperbolic but like maybe someone like a little bit Tom Westmany. That's who I was in, thinking yeah, too. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah again, they're, they're both of the firefighters and they're both right. sort of like East Coast guys. Um, that but I I think that that's exactly that's exactly the person I was thinking yeah. of. I think Tom had like an underrated uh, social game. You know, he could get a little bit like uh, confrontational at times mm-hmm. that we really haven't seen. Uh, that from Mike where, you know, uh, Tom would like mix it up with Kobe on occasion. And, uh, you know, like there was definitely some uh, like disagreements that we saw in, in the tribe where Mike has really, other than getting a little upset with Daniel for losing the idol, understandably, mm-hmm. um, you know, we haven't really seen that from Mike. Uh, and he also seems to have uh, like maybe even like a, a, a better social game uh, than Tom. And doesn't have the physicality that probably Tom had, who was 40, I think, when he played in survivor palau mm-hmm. let me let, let me let me see if i can dive in on what i think is a subtle distinction of what we what we see as 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 always members between tom and mike that tom when tom would get confrontational he would kind of puff out his chest and become the dominant figure in the room i am the head firefighter and you are stepping out of line and uh mike uh, when when I see Mike, when I see him coming at a situation, he is is almost like, "What are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? Come on!" Uh, like you know, mm-hmm. it, it's 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 almost it's coming at you at a similar level. It's like, "Come on, I know you can do better than this." Like, what do you mean you're losing the idol? Like, uh, 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 he's not puffing out of his chest. Like, how dare you lose my idol? That was your job. Uh, I, I, I feel it's a subtle distinction, and that can make him more relatable. I mean, I mean, just. Even the little moments, and I think the show has been good about highlighting this, like when Lydia comes by with her buff on and he accuses her of buff shaming. Buff like, shaming. You know, about yeah. Buff shaming. Like, that, was, that was a cute moment. And so he clearly knows how to dial in the level at which he he, he talks with people. That's that that I think that shows a level of empathy and uh, that – it, 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 from what we see on the show, that that's the kind of thing that takes you far, and that's why people like to probably why like to want to work with them. And we've seen it so many times already in the season, where okay, like he had the thing with Jenny to start up the season, but then okay, oh now he's got to scramble. Okay, Jenny's gone. Uh, we saw him, uh, you know, form that bond with High to the point where that I think he kind of replaced Lydia uh, in uh, High's mind. I think that High felt like okay, I have really like two number ones here and i think he ultimately picked mike over uh lydia we saw mike with um drea uh you know is able to like had like rapport uh with her right away uh we saw him with omer uh like having a conver- uh, a conversation about uh omer's anniversary and uh that he was like uh, hit it off with omer in- incredibly well uh it's just like person after person after person yeah. he changes up his approach and has been able to form these bonds. Yeah, and and, and, and it comes across very genuine. Like he, what he's saying is like, you know, what? good for you, Omer. Good for you. That's uh, you know, like 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 you know, congratulations on your relationship. Uh, that it feels genuine. It doesn't feel like he's just trying to say something to say mm-hmm. something. And uh, and I think that that's an important strength in in the game. And so uh, there's a lot of great qualities for a lot of these players. Um, 
I mean, I just I, we were just talking about Mike. I mean, let's, let's let's talk about Marianne for for a moment here. I mean, I'm sure a lot of great things have been said about Marianne, and justifiably so. Uh, and now we're starting to get Marianne's more precise strategic thoughts. We've gotten them a little earlier in, in terms of her assessment of other of like other people's games on her tribe, but you're getting her theory of the case now for what she that 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 she that her valuing of shields she could clearly come out like like you saw Tori's reaction to Marianne in that moment irrespective of what we thought of the metaphor or or or, or the thing she's like you know took taken aback by mm -hmm. how Mar that, that, uh, by by how how Marianne is so she, she she's sharp um and, and and someone in a position i mean she if she can uh keep that under, keep keep that under wraps well enough and show it at the right time, she can gain the respect, make sure she gets the respect of the jury. Certainly the jury, I imagine, would like her. And um, and 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 so there's there's a lot of upside to Marianne. Well, for Marianne, I thought that she did show uh like uh incredible guts at this tribal council. Uh we saw her when she yes. voted. Uh she says, you know, this is the biggest risk that I'm taking. And I, and I didn't know necessarily uh, what that risk was while she was voting, but she doesn't play her idol. She doesn't play her extra vote. So uh, that yeah. was like, uh, you know, incredibly brave of her to sit there uh, yeah. and not play the idol, especially when she's one of only uh, five potential people that could be voted for at that tribal council. Yes. Yeah, put a that, lot that's... of trust in that group, especially after you know sh that she had gotten into that little bit of a disagreement with Drea, who's supposedly mm -hmm. one of the people she's voting with at the tribal council. Yes, so that is so that is gutsy, and that that does take you know th there's sort of a preternatural calm that that can be achieved sometimes in these stressful moments, and I don't know if that's how she went about this, but like you know. Like I remember when I was going to be voted for, like with that crazy John Tribal Council. Like I just was like, okay, this is out of my hands now. Like I actually took a, I took a nap right before the Tribal Council where I was going to be, uh, like voted for. But like I, just, uh, I'm not trying to flex or anything, but I'm trying to say like, like, uh, uh, but like clearly Marianne has a way of like dialing it in at the Tribal Council. It's like and just going with it. It's like. This, this is I've set the course um, now and hopefully that pays off for her in the future where when people might be coming for her, she's able to detect it. That's the other side uh, uh, of it. Like uh, like as long as like, so like if she that, that she puts her trust in this tribe and it got her through this tribal council with both of her advantages intact. How cool mm -hmm. is that? Uh, she got to be hopefully she's able she has enough sort of detection measures in place that she can figure out when things are going sideways. Okay, a uh, little bit of a wild theory. Is it possible, do you think, that Drea might have been trying to, like, rattle the cage a little bit so Marianne plays her idol? Uh, whew, I didn't think about that. That would be really... I mean, I, I, it's, it's hard because I don't, I don't know Drea well enough uh, to know, like... I don't like think how, so. I'm just trying I to come up with it. Like, it was just such a weird exchange between yeah. the two of them at well, a first I, I, tribal council with people that you have, are voting with for the very first time. Um, well, I, mean, I, 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 I don't might, understand why Drea uh, like pushed it that far. I, I, my again, my hypothesis is that she's very sharp, but she's intense. Like, mm -hmm. like she, like that, that if she senses something that is not quite right, she will correct it just based upon what we see but like at the same time that sort of focus you know will will we'll get her to you know will we'll, you know got her three advantages i mean one of which you know she kind of got because you got lucky but the other ones clearly she she got via you know her you know you know you're making the right decision at the right time and so so that's that's the dichotomy you want in a reality show competitor someone who has strong strengths but a bit of, but a bit, but 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 a bit of an edge or something that's that that could be a weakness. In this case, hopefully, it doesn't blow back on Drea too much. But it was a weird moment. And why did it happen? Other than I, I, she, she just wanted to have a different narrative at Tribal Council, or just didn't, or flat out just didn't agree with what Marianne had to say, and just felt compelled to correct it. Mm -hmm. That's a weird thing to say. Yeah. As somebody, as somebody once said, it's a, a, I, I, ah, anyway, that's a, so that's, there, there are weird things that could set a tribal council and in the game and you have mm -hmm. to be, 
uh, careful. I mean, like, I mean, I, I, I had some weird things that I said that I really regretted on like on, on my season, like, uh, uh, um, and talk about these narratives. I remember like when we were talking at the, at, at the merge, um, I was trying to get the psychic strike force of six together and I was talking with Mike and Mike is kind of like, oh, I like the strike force of six. And I'm like agreeing with him and I'm saying some things and I said, I added on into the, into the discussion and it's, it's great to have options. And, and I was like, that is the wrong thing to say. And, right. and Mike clocked that he remembered that and brought it up to me two days later. It's like, I remember when you said that it's good to have options. It makes me feel like you're really not in on this strike force of six. I'm like, dang it, dang it. He, that was that was a mistake, mm-hmm. and so there are some people. And what did you can, say? Uh, I, 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 I love the Strike Force of Six. <laughs> it's probably something to that effect, probably yeah. with about that level of panic. Uh, and it was probably in the exact same conversation where he was talking to me about Gabby uh, being panicked at her travel council. But anyway, but that's but I'm just using that as an example that of something like I understand that these things leak out the best of intentions. And if you are on your game, like maybe Marianne properly should read that as. Dre is a little annoyed by me or something. Or Dre is not really chill with me. And, as, and maybe not just write that off as just a little hiccup at tribal council, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. What else, Christian? Okay. There's a, uh, so basically I can sort of go through these characters. Uh, I mean, uh, so uh, what was this that Roxroy apparently said about nagging? Was I missed this 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 thing? What was this thing that was said? At he the- said uh, something <laughs> along the lines <laughs> of that he's enjoying himself. He's out here. He's by himself. He doesn't have a, a, a wife uh, <laughs> nagging him. Okay, which the wrong thing to say. Well, I I, I I just remember I was watching the episode and I was scrolling through Twitter and I was like, why are people talking about Roxroy? Like, uh, I, I, I was, I was, I, but uh, otherwise, but I, 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 universal I, praise for Roxroy. I was gonna say, right, you know, bring up, uh, you know, his uh, nagging wife. Yeah, so it was a, it was a nice moment, and it was, uh, I'll tell you, I, I, I um, oh, oh, I have, I have something to say. So this, this dovetails off, off of Roxroy. It is nice to get some time alone if you are slightly introverted like myself and uh and i i'll tell you as much as it would have been bad for my game ob- pretty objectively if i got like sent to exile for a day mm-hmm. i really could have used that time to think at certain parts of the game where it, it's very hard for me to just sit around like what when I'm, when I'm around a bunch of people and uh and you have to be interacting with them and being ready to interact with someone else, I I relish the times, the few times I could be alone, and the only times that would be like when I that was at night, uh, and I was still around people, but I was just but there's silence. But the time I was in the water, like I I oh. would spe- when I, when I would go spear fishing, uh, yeah. I, so so like when um so like when Daniel in spring loaded death machine, yes yes and, and uh yes moments and, uh, of zen. Yeah, the moments of Zen when you're when you're when you're you're trying to sneak up and murder some fish, but the uh, unsuccessfully, by the way, and mm-hmm. um, and the uh, the silence of being in the water is really uh, um, is is important, and uh, at least for me, I I. I I, in fact, the time I really spearfished and like, and all of a sudden the camera guys were following me, which would, by the way, that's very scary when you're looking around, you're swimming down underwater and you're looking around for fish and all of a sudden a camera guy in scuba gear is next right. to you. I, I almost shot him. Yeah. The, uh, when, when you're carrying a spring loaded death machine. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The spring loaded murder machine almost lost in his direction. Uh, I was like, what? Uh, um, but I enjoyed that time and I totally sympathized with Daniel. When he talked about that, yeah, uh, in this in this episode, I, I I think that was one of the things that I was watching. I felt really bad for Daniel when people came after him for swimming in the ocean when he can't compete in swimming challenges. And I'm like, well, okay, all right, guys, please, just for a second here, uh, Dan Daniel swimming in a challenge involves doing freestyle, sw- slapping your arms as fast as possible to go through the water. If you're if you are spear fishing, you are not using your arms to propel yourself. You are using the flippers to propel yourself. And so uh, I think that I can totally see why Daniel would find it very relaxing to go spear fishing. And even with the spring loaded murder machine, he, you know, you are not lo- loading your shoulder. You're, you're loading your, your, your bicep to, 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 to launch it. And I think he might even use his other arm for it. So, it, uh, so, uh, 
I, I, but when Daniel described how serene it was, I was like, oh, he's absolutely right. Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. So those how far times out are is alone. the coral reef. Um, I, it's hard for me to gauge distances. I would say about 200 feet or so. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe 300 feet. At one point I looked on Google maps and confirmed it, but it was sometime somewhere in the, in the, re, in the regime of the, uh, like 200, 300 feet, uh, out, uh, based upon where I thought I was at the time. Um, and when it drops off, man, it, it goes deep. And there are some giant fish down there that I knew I had no chance catching, <laughs> uh, but it's great. Are any of these tribes on, uh, any of your old, uh, stomping grounds? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I mean, they're, They've pretty much settled in, I believe, on the old. You recognize landmarks for some of the beaches. Um, I, for instance, I believe Evie's tribe. I think uh, Luvu Yasa. was I remember, Yasa, Yasa. Yasa's tribe uh, last season was on the David Beach, and that's also where the let's see the Vati tribe. The Vati okay. tribe is uh, this time. The that's merge camp. Was. Yeah, yeah, I believe it's the merge camp. Yes, mm -hmm. and so um, and the reason that you know is that. Uh, the camp is kind of laden in the trees. It's sort of, it's elevated up on like almost a platform. Uh, that's where the campsite is. If you want to get down to the beach, you actually have to walk down uh, an elevated path to get down to the beach. So there's no really beachfront stuff there. So you have to kind of walk up and down to get down from camp and you can recognize those landmarks. Um, I never went to the uh, uh, to the what was called the Gol the Goliath Beach uh, for us, uh, which I believe. Uh, I mean, uh, and I think that you actually can recognize some real landmarks in real life. By the way, uh, I went and uh, visited Fiji uh, after um, the original season, and there you uh, and you can actually take a boat around. And one of the popular the popular destinations is Castaway Island, where the Tom Hanks oh, movie was filmed. Yes. yes. That's so, and I believe the opening challenge to the game, where where Daniel you know you know dislocated his shoulder, took place on that exact play uh, on that on that exact Castaway Island. It's it's a it's a tourist spot. It's actually you can look it up on Google Maps, you can see it, and I'm pretty sure that's exactly where they ran that challenge. It's all in that little Mamanuka Island chain. So I'm curious where these things are. I mean, they've they've set up shop there. They know where they're filming, and I think that leads to a lot of efficiency, and they can really groom the beaches just right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and much like Tom Hanks in the movie, uh, you two partnered up with Wilson. Yes, I did. That's yes. uh, that, that, that's that's true. Yes I, yes. I shouted his name slightly less, though. So uh, it was a... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, OK. Christian, uh, anything else from your notes from uh, this week? Well, it, it was, there was honestly so much going on. It's hard to actually like like clock it all together. Uh, but like I, I thought that it was interesting how Tori went from uh, burying herself to immune, and that made for such a fun uh, twist in the episode. That, 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 that those are great. Those are great things where people are immune who are clearly in trouble. It's always right. Good. Right. Um, it's, you know, uh, super exciting to, you know, like uh, I, I like having, you know, the heel of the season, you know, sticking around uh, for a little bit. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I think that uh, I'm here for and, the and, TV. Yeah. yeah, no, it's good. Yeah. And and, um, and, and, I, and I would love to see uh, multiple sides of Tori when it comes. Maybe she sticks around for a bit. Maybe she'd be a part of one of these votes. We're talking about where things get flipped around. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what comes that what that's what comes to mind for me. So uh, anyway, there's so, so that's I, I thought that that was a fun thing. There's lots of lots of little fun nuggets. This episode. Two hours. It's almost so much. It's hard to peg it all. OK. So. Yeah. Christian, so I still have a lot for you. I have uh, many questions from uh, the listeners of Ooh. Rob is a podcast. Right. What I'd love to do is take a quick break, reset, and then come back and uh, bring you some questions from the listeners of Rob is a podcast. Sounds great, Rob. Okay. All right. We will be uh, right back after this. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, hold on. Let me. <laughs> okay. This is uh, very unprofessional. Did I switch to uh, the? Uh, let me go to this one. Okay. And we are back here with the great Dr. Christian Hubicki. You having fun so far? Very much so. So much okay. to talk about. Okay. All right. Uh, we got some questions here from the listeners. Uh, okay. Tommy Guam wants to know Is Jonathan worthy of being a member in Slam Town? Absolutely, Jonathan is a member uh, worthy of being a member of Slam Town. He, he's are there already... any openings at Slam Town? Now you can see the question is where does he fit into the political 
hierarchy of slam town because you know look like i like i knew never to to try to run for mayor of slam town that's not my role that's not my strength comptroller is always where i wanted to be the question is where would jonathan best serve the the slam tonians and mm -hmm. so and so i mean john is the mayor and always will be uh however i, I think he's not ever gonna a, run for governor I mean, I mean, you know, that the first Slamtonian governor would be a would. So let's say he moves moves on. I think to to higher office. Certainly, um, I mean, I mean, he was the board George Bushy of Tushy at one point. So I can't that's rule true. Out that is national true. office for him. Yeah. And so, so let's assume that's the case. I think that someone with the seemingly the the the, the poise and understanding of Jonathan would work as as a, as as a, as a great uh follow on to the uh, to the Hennigan administration. Mhm. Mm okay. So, yeah, I for sure, for sure. I thought you people were going to ask if you would be a good brochacho and the rules of the brochachos are such that, you know, the, the, you know, he, you have to do your pull-ups every day, which he had been following since he was a tiny child, if I understand. Mm -hmm. it. I, I did he say 3 years old he had to do 3 his years old uh that his dad would wake him up from sleeping yeah. to do the pull-ups. Yeah, I mean, I started at two, but you know, three is okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, okay, we have um, so many, uh, so many uh, different uh, topics. Okay. okay. Um, how about um, a question about? Um, all right. What can Chanel and Tori do to earn trust back with the tribe? Uh, this is from Grace Mullen. I, I think that someone in a position like that, where you, where the reputation that is going around the camp is that you can't be trusted, is that you vote the way that you say you're going to vote a couple of times, and all the and you try to reinforce the idea that. You know, this reputation that people don't like or that people don't trust me, that's going based on that. That's just what you people have told you, you know, mm -hmm. like you, you, you um, like, for instance, Chanel, the Chanel's in trouble because of the vote where Jenny went home. Right. That's that. That's it's all basically follow up from that. And also the Mike vote. Right. Where she mm -hmm. voted through the vote, 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 vote at Mike. Right. So the only people who know about that, uh, uh, about those events were the other people on that tribe. So we're looking at here. Uh, that's, that's high and that's Mike. That's it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's only two other people. And there are still 11 people in this game. So if you start to call you, there's an opportunity to cultivate a different reputation for all the people who weren't there and spin an alternative narrative at what happened at that beach. And so, and if you keep voting the way you say you're going to vote, people will say, I don't get, why don't people want to work with Chanel? She seems like a perfectly fine vote. Mm -hmm. I think there's an opportunity for that kind of re rehabilitation. Yeah, you know, in the case of Chanel versus Tori, I feel like they've taken like different paths to uh, get there. Like, I think that we've seen uh, times in the game where, you know, Tori sort of like antagonizes uh, Roxroy uh, mm -hmm. and that you see Drea feel like, okay, well, Tori's creating a lot of drama. In the mm -hmm. case of Chanel, I think that she uh, like was probably like playing just as hard as some of the other players who are not in that position it just so happened that her play didn't work it, but she got uh, busted that's the problem yeah, yeah yeah like i think that she's probably done like just as much like maneuvering yeah. in the game yeah. as high has done yeah. it just so yeah. happened that you know uh he was the victor and she was not yeah so survivor uh i'm gonna put on my put on my that tribal council hat it's like survivor is a narrative warfare OK, and that that uh, it doesn't matter what actually happened at that old beach. It's the narrative of what happened after that beach. Like you and only the only thing, only way that anyone knows what happened back on that old tribe was the story or the people telling the stories about it. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, for instance, the Angelina's Jackets and Eggs uh, uh, Tribal Council. Right. We heard all about it. Because Mike told that story to everyone who would listen, and he's a great storyteller. And you, and, and the way he just told—I mean, everyone would talk about it, and like Nick would tell the story, so we knew it was true. But like, there was just a way that it was delivered that it was like this, 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 this hilarious tale that almost couldn't be true, but was delivered with such gusto. You're like, wow, that. Oh, so that's what Angelina did over there. So that was the story, right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't know who's telling the story of what happened with Chanel at that beach, but she could tell a different tale. Like she could say, look, I was, 
you know, I like I I was at a position where I didn't, you know, have a vote. Um, and you know, we we were trying, you know, we were trying to get rid of Lydia. By the way, the person that we all got rid of anyway. So you can say whatever you want about Lydia. She's now gone, not even on the jury. And you can um and as a result, you can say it's like, look, I I I was stuck with Daniel, who threw me under the bus at a tribal council. I was I was in a corner mm-hmm. and I did what you told me to do. I, I just don't understand why I can't why I'm not included in these votes. So like you can tell a different story. It, it just needs to be compelling. Christian, you brought up the jackets and the eggs. We had some egg talk in the episode last night. We found out that Jonathan yes. is uh has a, a hearty diet. He mm-hmm. uh says his average meal consists of 18 eggs, nine pieces of cheese, and grits. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Average. That's, a, that's, a, that's average, average meal. Average meal. Uh that's a that's a lot. It's a lot of calories you have to work off in a given day. The eggs, I I you know, I, I know that's a big thing for people who love to work out, like myself. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But, uh, mm-hmm. uh, but, but uh I I I'm not an egg guy. I am not okay. a, 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 big, it's a, a big, a big egg guy. So this was actually a point of, uh, uh, so like, like I, if someone prepares me a nice meal in which there is a nicely prepared egg, that's a thoughtful part of the dish. I will enjoy it. Uh, if it's, if the, but like but one of the things I actually don't eat breakfast hardly at all ever, uh, because most breakfast foods, I don't really enjoy that much. And partly it's because every sandwich I ever order, if it's at breakfast time, there will be an egg. Just throw it on top. Mm-hmm. I'm like, and you're okay. a big sandwich guy. I love sandwiches, but at, you know, so so I I have to rapidly learn at any restaurant that I, that I have to go to is like, okay, wh- which restaurants are one serving lunch? I can eat I can eat dinner any time of day, and so so which rest- restaurants serve lunch or dinner in in the morning, or what elements are on the menu don't have eggs or aren't okay. candy? You know? All right, so you don't like breakfast food. Will you eat dinner in the morning? Yeah, I would eat dinner in the morning if someone if it, if that was available. I would eat like a meatloaf at six in the morning if they had one available. Wow, I, I eat chill. I, yeah, I, I I I do not have a sense of light versus heavy food, so I can just eat heavy food whenever yeah. I want, and wow. so uh, I'm fine with it. So uh, so like I mean, I was at the airport uh, the other day. I was traveling, and uh, that's the thing about it. go to airports and I have, I have an early morning flight. I want to go eat something. I want something savory. I love savory foods, but it's gonna be like all they have like even a pizza joint. In, at, at an airport in the morning, we'll have like breakfast eggs. pizza. Yeah, breakfast pizza. Guess what a breakfast pizza has? Eggs. It's like okay, all right, fine, we get it. You like eggs, so I literally went to the only restaurant that was open. It's like, well, what do you got? It's like, yeah, it's like you have a sausage omelet. So I said, can I have the sausage omelet? Hold the egg, and uh, so I got an omelet. Hold the egg for breakfast that morning. So it's just, it's just your options. If you're not a big egg guy, you're an egg, egg person. You're pretty limited. And this yeah. is this. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so anyway, I, I have egg opinions and um, I just and, and eggs are there. Look, they're, they can they can be great. I, I've eaten wonderful egg dishes, but like just because I ordered something to eat before the uh, before 11 a.m. doesn't necessarily mean I need an egg on it. Yeah. Save some eggs for Jonathan. OK. Yes. Um, he loves them. Would you have preferred to know how much grits is Jonathan having? Uh, of course, I would. Uh, I would like to know that grits are grits are fine, especially if you. Uh, uh, I, I imagine if he's doing slices of cheese, if he's making cheese grits. I don't know if he just does the egg straight. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so that 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 would be. I would. I would want to know how much how much uh, grits he had. How much he, he eats. I mean, I'm a kind of guy that like. Um, in the times I relish that I get that I can work from home on certain days, I, I'll I'll cook uh, like a. A cup or so of rice, uh, chicken, and veg and, and a bunch of vegetables for like okay. a for like a for like a breakfast. You know, that's what I'll eat. So uh, that, that that that'll be fun. So I just need to, you know, I guess I got to work out or something in order to work that off or something. But anyway, mm-hmm. but so the grits grits I grits I'm for. Um, and the other thing you eat for breakfast, I mean, like a pancake. I'm like, I'm sure people like pancakes. I'm not a big sweets guy. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I can eat sweet things or I can eat eggs. So what that leaves is I go to you know. Uh, places that serve burgers for breakfast, which which is always good for me. So okay, all right. And which of the burgers from Applebee's uh, would you have ordered? What were the burgers? What were the burger options? I mean, burgers, burger. It's, I mean, 
burgers at restaurants are not like <laughs> mixes of like, oh, this is the patty that's mixed with with bulgogi sauce or something like that. They don't do that. It's just things on top of the burger that are different, right? Um, no offense to Applebee's. Emily and I would go to Applebee's after we'd go to the movies and we yes. would discuss the movies we would watch at the Applebee's. Um, like and, a little but, podcast. Exactly. It was like our own little podcast where we would discuss and do our own little movie review afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, and we get the two for 20, you know, the two, the two meals, and I think two apps for 20, 20 bucks with with a drink. And uh, but like, mm-hmm. I, so I don't know what I, I so if I had to guess, we're going to play yeah. a guessing game for the type of burgers that Applebee's would serve. OK, I imagine there's a kind of, you know, tr- traditional classic burger that's going to have your lettuce. Yeah, tomato, classic lettuce, burger. Tomato. That was one of the three. That was literally called a classic burger. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with a either Southwest or barbecue burger. This might be one of them. Is, is, uh, is, 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 so one of the three they? that Jeff gave us was the uh, quesadilla burger. Now, oh, I did Mexican. Again, okay. I have to take a look at that. I don't know if it was prepared the same way I'm looking on the Applebee's menu where okay. uh, that this is like, uh, you know, in a tortilla, uh, a burger. Uh, I feel like that all the burgers that I saw were in a hamburger bun. Uh, but Jeff did advertise the quesadilla burger, and the one he really sold was the whiskey bacon burger. Yeah, th- so that's the barbecue. So whiskey bacon, I'm telling you, is going to be the barbecue burger because the whiskey is going to be a whiskey barbecue sauce. Would be my guess. Mm-hmm. Is that what it says? Is there a barbecue sauce on the whiskey bacon burger? Whiskey bacon is it- burger is. Uh, yeah, it looks like there's onion rings. Uh, looks like that there is. Uh, Got your um, sauce in there. You gotta be some barbecue sauce on the whiskey bacon burger. Otherwise, what's the whiskey part of the bacon? Do they literally Whis- just, or know, fireball <laughs> whiskey infused steak sauce? So <laughs> there you yeah. go. It's the steak sauce. Okay, got it. So there's there's typically something that that that's that's the equivalent of southern or 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 southwest. Now the quesadilla burger, I can only imagine was pico de gallo and some kind yeah, of yeah, you and, got and, it. Th- yeah, yeah, that's what's gonna go on there. You know, look, you can mix it. The thing about burgers is you can mix and match these sort of these ingredients. It's hard to go wrong with them. Um, I know one thing that Emily and I will make was we'll do a, a, a Pari- Korean barbecue style burger, uh, you know, uh, where we'll Thank mix you. in some brown sugar and, uh, some, and some ginger, chopped ginger and some green onions into, but you mix it into the patty and this is something, okay. All right, all right. I'm, we're going off the rails. It's a little outside of Survivor here. We I'm don't normally talk about food on the podcast, but, you, but we'll make an exception for you. Oh, okay, that's right. Anyway, I have to, okay, I just have opinions, all right? So, like, the, these restaurants, probably for convenience sake, they just have patties. They put them on the grill. They put different toppings on top. Uh, top toppings on top. I'm a big fan. You mix things into the patty. And by the way, and th- this, works, this works well, by the way, also with modern vegetarian patties as well. You can do this with the impossible meat. I've done it, uh, and it works out well. So, uh, anyway, that, that's, that's where it's at. So if I were to have a restaurant concept, it's going to be something where the the protein patty is going to have things mixed in with it. Uh, you know, I, I always I, I have a fancy uh, making a, a, a pierogi truck uh, called oh. uh, Hubiki's Extreme Pierogies. Uh, but, uh, you know, where you mix things into the pierogi meat, uh, you'd have the. Uh, you know, you have your classic pierogies and your, your bogogi pierogies. Anyway, I, I gave away my restaurant concept. Next question. Pierogi, so. <laughs> pierogi hoagie. Uh, yeah. Check it out. Coming <laughs> yes. to you. Um, Applebee's fries. Okay. Applebee's fries uh, have skin. People have skin. Are, are we Applebee's fries? Correct. Yes. Uh, also on the menu that, you know, during the commercial, do you fast forward the commercials? Uh, I do, I do, yeah, I, 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 I do, but I did see there was an Applebee's ad directly yes. after. Yes. yes, I did. Yeah, and so I like I'm watching live on Wednesday night, and I get the Applebee's ad for, but, but what are they promoting on the Applebee's ad? Not the, not the whiskey, uh, ba- w- bacon burger, but the irresistible. Oh, the simply irresistible. Yes, that's simply right. Simply irresistible. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to understand, you know, this Survivor, this aired uh, nine months ago. It's since then, the marketing has has shifted. You know, for all we know, these things have changed on the menu in that time. So I think that that's uh, so th- that that's how that works. I mean, I mean, I, I talked to you, I think, a long time ago about how I was practically begging for Outback Steakhouse to somehow sponsor our season. Because mm-hmm. uh, the last merge we had seen was season 35 and they had Outback yeah. Steakhouse themed merge feast i was like oh that's so great and i would literally i would do ad reads to the camera unprompted about outback steakhouse in hopes that somehow it would conjure to some kind of steak fueled uh coma that would have come to me at the merge 
Christian, um, I know it's, you know, not Outback Steakhouse, but do you think that I could promote this podcast and say that this podcast with Christian Hubicki is going to be simply irresistible? <laughs> I, I I think I think you can. I don't think there's any anything in my contract that for, that forbids that with mm-hmm. you, Rob. I think you, I think you can go. Ahead. You can use my likeness in that mm-hmm. way. Okay. All right. Let's uh, see. How about um, okay? Um, <laughs> uh, what, what? Any more Applebee's questions? Or are you done talking about Applebee's? Oh, if you got another Applebee's one. I'll take another one. Okay. Uh, you got a, a this or that from Michael Butler or Rear Junior. Uh, shark bowl or beer drum? Were those the options that were available? The beer looks like drum? that Jonathan had the had the beer. Everybody else had a shark bowl. What, what what exactly is a shark bowl? You're the one with it's the menu blue, up, right? Yeah, I uh, okay. couldn't really tell you much else about the. I believe there's rum in it. It's probably rum and maybe some blue carousel in it, perhaps. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, I I remember. I I don't I don't know. I, I I've had. I tried making blue drinks before. I, I, Emily and I tried to make a Romulan ale once. Which has, <laughs> a, yeah, yeah, I mean, which, which, yeah, we, uh, which is, of course, as as many Trek fans know, is a blue beverage that was, of course, banned in the Federation due to the trade embargo with the Romulan Empire. Right. But the, uh, yeah. So we made. I think it was a heavy blue carousel beverage. It wasn't particularly great, but it was meant to approximate the uh, um, approximate the the power of the Romulan ale, which is much okay. more. All right. Well, I hope you don't get busted for uh, the the Romulan ale. Uh, well, you know, the statute of limitations is up. OK. Um, all right. Mike Christensen says, uh, what are the chances that the 42 in Survivor 42 isn't just a number, but it's actually the theme in reference to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Uh, what would uh, Survivor, the answer to the ultimate question in life, the universe and everything look like? Applebee's. I mean, uh, sorry, uh, that's a. Uh... The way it was sold in that in that ad, by the way, was like is like big thing. We're changing this season. Yeah. All right. We're changing three things this season. Okay. We got some feedback. Number one, the food is from Applebee's. Applebee's. I I I, I um it, I think that this is just like a small note for Jeff, but like he's doing these these two camera uh talks and the things, and I'm not sure he has scripted them out or he's workshopped them a lot. I wonder if he's just going with the flow. And yeah. um, and I feel like if he had edited that, it would have come out differently, and they would have done it. A bit I think maybe order the things in the like maybe like okay the, that uh, okay first thing is okay we're gonna let the people know they're gonna get a power okay yes second we're gonna give them the chance to switch, and then also the food this season is gonna be from Applebee's. Like, <laughs> that, I don't I know if I would have like... led with Apple. Maybe Applebee's said no, Jeff. You lead with Applebee's. You lead with the whiskey <laughs> bacon burger. We're not paying you Applebee's money to be third. There, there was a product representative on site. It's like, you better, better say that first or that money is gone. And uh, that, 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 that maybe that's what it was. But like, it was just, it just the, the just the, the slosh from, we're going to tell you what is different about it in this very sincere tone. And then it's an, then it's an ad. I was like, oh, wow. That's that, 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 that was classic. Um, mm-hmm. But Survivor, the life, the uni- life, universe, and everything. If that was a theme of a season, what what sort of does Survivor like it, in the world of Survivor? What are the things that are paramount values? Uh, so, on the on the Paramount Family Networks, well, yes, and like um, uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> well, I think that um, the ethos of Survivor, uh, especially here in the postmodern era, is that. It doesn't matter, even if you win or lose, only that you came out to Survivor and you tried. Yes. You gave it your all. Uh, you never quit. You never, never quit. quit. Never quit. Uh, yeah, so that you, you, yeah, exactly. You, you, not only did you try, you never quit. You went outside of your comfort zone. Um, and I, I, I think that even the show's producers will tell you when you're about to go on into the game, and for those of you who have that, that, that fortune that they get to go, uh, you know – the two things they told me to do were uh, play the game and be yourself. Mm-hmm. That's what, that's what they told me. And I think that that is, uh, th- that is true to what they, what they want. And uh, so, and I think the never quitting is a huge, again, there's a very specific theme. I mean, that's what the edge of extinction was all about. You know, this is the thing that clearly Jeff, How far could you push yourself? Right. Well, for, for even a sliver of a chance to come back into the game. And um, and so that was the theme. So 
Uh, now it's very generic. So if you had, if this were the theme of, of, of the season, it would be, <laughs> it could be like an edge of extinction on steroids. Like how little of a, a, of a chance would you hang on to for a chance to, to stay in the game? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I like, uh, like I imagining like, like you remember the Tom Westman and Ian uh, style challenge where they're on that ba- that buoy all night long. I think that like, or, or at least into the night, I think that's something that would be like something the show would really celebrate. Like imagine if it, it would be a nightmare for production, but like a, like an, like a, an endurance challenge actually did go through like the night and the wee hours of the morning, it was resolved. I think they'd love that. But I almost feel like that you broke that where I feel like that yeah. the show has really uh, gone away from that. I, I don't know if, and maybe I'm missing like an obvious example mm-hmm. where we do not have immunity challenges that are true. Like in a, in a show that's all about never give up, don't quit, test of wills, can you do this? Like uh, yep. what what do you have left inside of you? It's almost like that since, you, you know, you went, uh, you know, five some odd hours mm-hmm. against Alec that it's like they've taken the challenges. And then we saw last season where um, Xander won your challenge that they, they've made them harder. They've, ra- yeah. they've ratcheted the challenges uh, and made them, more difficult so that they end quicker. Yeah, that's true. I think that's a production schedule thing. I think that that it, we, it created real problems for production that we went that long in that challenge that it pushed back tribal council. Now that said, the show when they had that, they leaned into it. Like I think that like I, I've heard various estimates. I mean about the amount of effort that they went to editing that sequence, and I give them so much credit. So and they've when they never get released. It, the Hubicki cut. <laughs> they have not released that. Uh, that that's. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. Here's the thing that um, uh, the show I think could could improve on. It, it, not necessarily the Hubicki cut this directly, but things like I, I can't believe I said that out loud. But uh, the um, but additional materials. Um, it, it's kind of stagnated over yes. the years. There's been sec- there's been secret scenes, and they're on Paramount Plus. But there is a real, not even I mean, like on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, they're not even YouTube. They're not even prepared about plus now. So like that's that's um there is so uh, like and the DVDs they put out. I mean, keep in mind. I I just remember the other day. Like I'm looking at my my I had like my my parents sent me. They bought the DVD of my season for me. It's very nice of them. I realized oh this is so nice. And I realized wait it's not even a DVD is not even high definition. It's like like it, like this like this is um like I feel like there's an opportunity for someone to come along and overhaul the bonus material the uh, the the things that come out outside of the, of of the show and, and take that to the next level because they have some good stuff uh that that that, that, yeah. that hits the cutting room floor. The I only mean, good stuff that they uh, put out is uh the Ponderosa footage, which is not even like other materials from uh the beach. I mean, I watched the secret scenes every week uh, and there were like one or two decent ones from the season. But for the most yeah. part, uh, they are like a complete waste of everybody's time. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I there, there have been some good ones. I remember I enjoyed from watching for my season. I saw some with other people, but even then, well, like, they I, used I, I, to, if, if, yeah. I, if I may, that they used oh. to drop like probably like extended cuts of mm-hmm. the interview segments. So right. you would get like maybe like, 10 secret scenes and it would be like, you know, Christian, uh, like on the importance of winning a reward. And and it would be like, basically like, you know, a five minute clip of you talking about, you know, what you thought about the reward challenge and we would get some other information. But then I think during, uh, the edge of extinction, I think was sort of like highlighted, like, Oh wait, hold on. Sometimes they, uh, make Franken bites out of these. Uh, and it was like, okay, stop showing them. Oh, got it, got it. So it became a, a minor scandalish thing that, like, I, I, I didn't, I didn't know about that. Like, the people saw where the clips were cut from in the extended interviews, and so yeah, yeah, they didn't like that, so they got mm-hmm. rid of. Them. Yeah, I, I, interesting. I mean, the 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 show has so much going for it, and I I find it odd that like I don't I feel like if that if they have a defensive mentality about it, I don't think it's necessary in, in, these, in these particular things. Like even uh like when Jeff's talking to camera, like and I and I think there's a lot of opportunity for how Jeff could handle talking to camera. I still think there's a lot of opportunity there. Um. Like he, the the way that sometimes he justifies things is like he's preempting people's criticisms of, of of this. Like he's explaining to the audience in part, like, oh, we film these things back to back. Back, don't forget, we film these things back to back, so that way the, the audience doesn't say, hey, don't these people know? Didn't they watch last season? 
And uh, but at the same time, when I'm watching it on the show, it's it's kind of weirdly jarring to break that fourth wall on the show where we are ostensibly trapped on a desert island and marooned like Gilligan. You know, mm-hmm. it, 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 it's I I don't know how to walk that line, but I and even the way he talks about it, like I, I'll just give just a few notes on what he says. Like he called it S42. Like, yeah. like, I'm like, I'm like, that's what I type on Reddit, you know, when I'm talking about seasons. That's not how a human being talks about the season of television that they had ju- that, that, that you are currently delivering a line on. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, you know, I'm not watching Better Call Saul. And it's like, you know, it's like, Kim, next I really week, hate what you did. I, yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, 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 I, 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 I don't like the fact what, that you, uh, you know, that you and Mike Armantrout did this thing back on S4. You know, mm-hmm. they don't, they, it, 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 it's kind of. It, it's a weird line to walk and I'm sensitive to it. And I think that there are little things like that that could improve the immersion and yeah. also improve the experience as you're talking about the extended materials. You don't have to be T-Bird defensive. T-Bird picked up on this last week that she was talking about S42. And then I, I saw this, that then Jeff said it during the episode. I wonder I wonder how much S42 was talked about out there. And mm-hmm. I wonder if we're in a new era of will we have S43 and I was talking about S37. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, it's part of me and this is my own nitpicky thing. This is like I, t- I talked to you before about how, like, uh, I care a lot about whether or not things make sense in the world that you're in and things that are winks to the audience uh, that might not know what you're talking about. I'm very sensitive to I kind of like mm-hmm. try to I would try to find ways not to do that. Um, and there's a lot of self-reference in Survivor. And that's not inherently bad, but there's a lot of us. Uh, the thing that is the assumption that the people watching this show know what you're talking about. And I think I would be careful with that. Um, like, 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 here's, like, here's, here's a subtle thing. And I wonder if anyone cares about this other than me, like in the opening episode, that opening challenge happens, you've got Chanel and hi, no, oh, no, no, sorry. It wasn't Chanel. It was Dre- Lindsay, Dre- Dre- Lindsay, hi, Lindsay, Lindsay, yeah. Drea and hi, Lindsay, Drea and hi. Uh, and they uh, were had were were suddenly thrust into a challenge, and they naturally are talking about, oh, what do we do? Should we get this advantage? And they're like, sh- and uh, then then uh, Lindsay, no, it was Drea. Drea said, well, really, what we need to do is make the merge, and that's really when the most important thing happens. And like from some audience perspective, they're like, what the heck is a merge? And like it's, it's like they're talking about this deep game mechanic literally minutes into the season. Now they should talk about that. But the way that the show shows it, like it's it's almost like it, it's it's assuming a lot about what your audience already knows and understands about this game. And if this is a show, I feel like that you know that wants to bring in children and new audiences, I would find different ways to work that in to the material. Mm-hmm. It's a very specific thing. I, I, it, this might just be me, and I but I feel like the show should zoom out a touch and see like how would an average not. 40 season long fan of the show, see the show and look at it from that perspective, a touch. I almost feel like that they have given up on that. Uh, I think that Jeff has talked about this at a time. And I, and I had wondered after the long layoff after Mm -hmm. season 40 happened and then, okay, Netflix and the pandemic and Paramount plus. And I wondered, would they come back with a season of survivor 41 that was a little bit more of like, okay, back to basics. Let's bring it, let's bring in a deal. And they went in completely the opposite direction. Uh, yeah, it's direction. like really like, hey, Survivor, you're back. We missed you. And the, and this is a show where like, uh, if you like Survivor, you're going to like, you know, uh, we hope you're going to like what we're doing because it's even crazier than what we did before. Yeah, so and it's I think the multiverse the- of madness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and, and the... And certainly, it's a fair assumption that if you're watching this show, you probably know the game mechanics. Of it. I'm not saying that we should pretend like no mm-hmm. one's seen this show, but like it, it, the the, I think the reason I'm sensitive to it is because it's possible you lose the ability to uh, uh, have a fresh fresh perspective. Yes, on this game. Oh, yes, we've lost that. Uh, and, and the ironic thing of it all, Christian. Is that you know they sort of like basically it's like hey if you if you don't know what's going on go back to Paramount Plus uh, go back go back <laughs> catch it come back when you're caught up. Uh, however, at eleven, uh, I'm sorry, at at ten forty seven in the finale, Jeff did say if you're just joining us, hey, this is Survivor. Uh, Stu makes the pizza. People wonder is the pizza real? <laughs> yes, and 
it's like, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. so yeah, I didn't, I, I, this is my first episode and I'm watching it uh, with like 10 minutes left in the finale. <laughs> uh, I, I think that, uh, and I've, I've been in this situation like, like Jeff in a completely different scenario. Like when I'm giving a lecture yeah. and I, I have a general plan for my lectures, but I, I also like to be a little bit improvisational. And I like to think mostly my lectures are good uh, in class, but then sometimes like, you know, I get flustered or like, you know, I'm coding something up and there's an unexpected error that pops in there. I have to, and I have to, I have to like, like, like filibuster a set for a second, or I have to wing it until I get the thing back on track. And you kind of just say whatever pops into your mind, just improv, right. To keep the, just to keep the, 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 the pattern going. And there's a role for that. But I think that that's what I see Jeff doing. In a lot of these things, like he's at the finale, it's he's fresh off of just had a final travel council, and he's going right into it, and he's more or less winging it in that moment. And he's talented, but I don't care how good you are, it's hard to wing it and stay on message. Mm -hmm. Best politicians don't do that well, you know. And so it's it, it, so I think that uh, it would it, it would benefit from just a just taking a step back, slowing down for Jeff. Like when he's in this moment, I mean, he does in the real finale, like when we did like the, the, the live finales, he is on message, right? He's yeah. prepared. There, there is a production in place. He knows the points he wants to get to, what he wants, the answers he wants from people. Right. Uh, but I, I feel, but you can also sense when he's improv Jeff. Mm -hmm. And I think that improv Jeff does not stay on that message as well. So anyway, that, I, I'm, I'm belaboring the point, but that's what I'm getting at. Uh, all interesting observations. So yeah, so so uh, and, oh. and and I yeah, go on. Do you do you think they will bring out Applebee's at the live finale uh, this season? Of like, all right, congratulations to our winner. Uh, okay, let's bring out some Applebee's for everybody. Who wants <laughs> Mike? You want a you're a burger guy. You want a whiskey bacon burger? Depends what's what was what was in the contract. If they, mm -hmm. like, how much did they pay? Yeah. Like, it was like Applebee's what, is sponsoring the reunion this season. So like the uh, uh, what what's sort of the the classic thing about product placement that it costs like if you want the villain of your movie to to to, to use the product it's a certain amount if you want the hero using it it's more you know mm -hmm. maybe like you know you want Jeff eating an Applebee's burger that's going to cost extra or you wanted the finale you know yeah. I, I wonder what the price points are yeah okay Jeff did say he was going to have the pizza but he didn't actually eat it on the screen in uh, season forty one finale. Okay, that's fair, fair enough. And I, I, by the way, I will say, I, 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 I uh, as much as as there is fun joking about Applebee's, I, you're starving. I mean, seriously, anything that is calories, especially these folks. I mean, they don't even yeah. have rice. You know, like I, I mean, sure. I, I, I mean, people ask me, Christian, what was the Survivor Pizza like? People are like, people are like your fans, like who are in the know on Survivor Pizza stuff. And I'm like, it was fine. It was fine. And it's I, fine. I, I, like, I mean, if, it's if I were to better than stew, right? Better than stew. Uh, every time we make stew, Rob, you come up in conversation. <laughs> by the way, at, at my house, I was like, "Oh, let's make stew." You should text Rob. He's like, "No, I'm not gonna bother Rob." Send me a picture. Yeah, stew. yeah, it's a stew. Uh, and um, yeah, so it's I mean, like it's fine. Sure, if I were to go to a pizza restaurant in New York and get this, I'd be like, "This isn't what I expected." Josh mm -hmm. Wiggler would be very offended by this. Uh, by, 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 by this pizza, he loves the pizza. And mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's and uh, but you're out there. Who cares? It is yeah. calories. And yeah, yeah. I, I'm no snob. Uh, I, I would go to Applebee's uh, with my kids tomorrow. Yeah, ex exactly. I, I, I'll tell you, I'm a I, I, I'm an Olive Garden guy myself. If they brought out Olive Garden, yeah. I, you know, I, I, you know, unlimited soup, salad and breadsticks. That that's my thing. Um, the yeah, I, I like all kinds of food. I think the thing for me is I, I I'm a fast eater. Uh, uh, and I like I, I actually wondered if like I've always been a fast eater. I remember even in my preseason uh, like when I was at casting, I, I ate so fast that Pat from my season recognized it and talked about it and first one out. That guy eats really fast. And I thought that maybe going on Survivor would make me enjoy food. Nothing gets past everybody. that guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's like I would slow down. It was the opposite. Like I like I would have my, my portion of rice and I would just like just down it and just mm -hmm. get it over with. And I've been mm -hmm. a fast eater. And it's just and it's so uh, uh, so things like like uh, go to Olive Garden, just food just disappears. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's enough about it. Yeah, that's my Olive Garden take. So. Okay. All right. Well, next time we're together, <laughs> I know where to take you now. <laughs> All right. Okay.
All right. Chris Snyder wants to know, we've been seeing Marianne get attention and uh, beginning to get some negative reception for talking too much and being a ball of sunshine. What's the perfect amount of talking that one must do for Survivor? First, do you see any parallels between yourself and Marianne in the way that uh, she is being received by the other players? Yeah, I, I do see a lot of parallels. I mean, it's uh, um, there. I think that uh, uh, I can imagine if Marianne was in that same challenge that I was with Alec, I bet I, I bet Marianne would do something similar to me. Mm -hmm. And um, and I like to think in my mind that I would I would be a lot I would talk a lot less around camp. But the same, but that's that's a convenient story I tell myself, and I try to say what evidence is there on of the screen of me talking. I remember like there would be a scene of me and Gabby are talking about Slam Town, and they would constantly cut to Carl just shaking his head. He's just like, what are what are they talking about? So uh, so like so I I remember that from that scene. It's like oh I didn't realize I was annoying Carl so much at, at, at that moment, but we're cool. And uh, so I can uh, so I don't know. Uh, so I both Mary and I Ann and I do talk a lot. I do see parallels there. Mm -hmm. um, I also can understand being flustered at tribal council. Like I remember when, when Angelina told me uh, that actually Christian, I tried to say, you know, I, I uh, something about me being threatening and, you know, but at the same time I made alliances and she's like, actually Christian, that makes you more threatening. And I was like, I was contradicted kind of like, uh, like, as like, and I, mm -hmm. I felt defensive. I was like, I was like, I have to kind of defend myself at tribal council. So I feel like I've been in a lot of the same places as her. At least I see echoes of my, my experience and, and what she's going through. You know, it's hard. And I could certainly like, uh, see myself there also where, you know, um, you're talking a lot. I think the producers like it. Also, yes, they're yeah. like, oh, give us more, give us more. Yep. So you have sort of like, okay, well, all right, it's, it is hitting for them. Um, maybe it's hitting for some people. Maybe it's not hitting for others. Um, so, you know, it, it's hard to sort of like, you know, uh, get it. And also you're super excited. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, mean the, the, I remember vividly the stories you would tell about, uh, uh, both season six and season eight uh, on the evolution S6, strategy. When yeah, S8, yeah. I'm sorry, S S six S eight. I'm sorry, I'm not with the hit the lingo in these days. Mm -hmm. uh, they and you talked about like 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 you tried to talk to Sue Hawk about like the snakes and rats speech, and Sue Hawk was not super thrilled to talk about. They it. thought I was so <laughs> annoying. Yeah. <laughs> I, I it's and you were ahead of, you were ahead of your time i feel like like you, were, you like, like nowadays the show if, if you knew everything about the snakes and rats speech the show would be like oh tell us all about that you know tell us how big of a fan you are can you memorize the entire can you tell us the entire snakes and speech from memory Rob? yeah i and i had like like, like oh, what was this person like what, what was this person like yeah. what was it like what was it like when this happened and and it was like uh, you know I, I thought like oh okay people are gonna like that uh that i i'm so curious about that and but people thought it was annoying Really, that's interesting. So, and, and maybe that's just a shit time, the shifting times. Like, uh, I, I, this is a this is a weird story. I I recently I was on Twitter and I got an alert that Danger Dave Ball was streaming live on Twitch. Yeah, and okay. so I just so I was oh I have to see what Danger Dave Danger Dave Ball was streaming live on Twitch. So I so I popped on the stream. And I was like, and I didn't expect David Danger, Danger Dave Ball knew anything about who I was. I just popped in and I was like, hey, Danger Dave. And he somehow remember, recognized my handle and was like, are you Christian? And I started talking with him and I would ask him all kinds of questions like this. Like, hey, what was it like to, uh, you know, yes. what, what was that? What was that? What was that challenge like where there was no Jeff? Did you just run and grab the stuff and they took it away? And he's like, no, no, no. And, and like Dave was like cool to talk about all these details from the experience that's what i would expect like if you go to sue hawks like hey what was this person like i would yeah. expect a positive response but you were surprised yeah so the thing is that i, I think that this is survivor all-stars in in my oh. so that these are people that like uh probably for like the last couple of years like have like a bunch of random people asking them about survivor whereas yeah. the modern survivor player is almost yeah. like so excited when they meet somebody who knows anything about their season. Yes. That, you know, Sue Hawk has been answering the same questions for, you know, four years. That's a good point. And also, like, the show was, like, water cooler conversation back when people used that phrase. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, and th that, like, it was, like, these were celebrity, celebrities. I mean, Sue Hawk, didn't she interview George W. Bush, like, on, yes. like, 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 yes. that's, that, like, <laughs> that's, that's the level the, the of George, exposure. the George Bushy, not of Tushy. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, that's he's he's a different George Bushy, and the 
that's the level of fame that they all had. I mean, if you knew someone who knew someone who was on Survivor, like I remember my high school biology teacher's college roommate's sister was Amber. And I was like, that was my connection to Survivor. And so like, and, and mm-hmm. so, and uh, it, it, it was such a huge deal. So I guess that's a big thing that she has been living her entire life. So to be asked on it about it on the show, I, I, I see the difference. But I was just like, my, my point was like, I talked with Danger Dave and yeah, he was totally game to talk about all of these. And he remembers all the, th- I mean, we all remember all these little things from our season. So if anyone comes up to me and asks me like, you know, a random detail about my season, I'm like, I am thrilled that it's not like, that, that that they remembered some detail anyway in fact sometimes you have to fight with strangers who say you are not on your season <laughs> that's right wait wait so yet so you're referring to something that happened on twitter not too long ago i guess well, wait, wait, about, the, right? the, the, yeah. the story of you on the airplane right where, yes, yes. where the guy with you were sitting next to the guy who was watching david versus goliath on netflix correct yes that's right so i was sitting on a plane and with Emily and the, uh, so Emily and I were in two seats and then the third and then the aisle seat plops down this gentleman and he's watching David versus Goliath on Netflix. And I'm like, I just look at Emily like, this is crazy. This is crazy. And part of me is trying to like play it cool. is like, it's like, I, I won't say anything. But at some point, just the temp- temptation was just too great. And I was just kind of like, what you watching? It's like, oh, it's survivors. Oh, OK. Yeah. What season? And uh, so I'm like, like S37. Okay, right. S37, of course. It's like, okay. It's like, it, it, uh, and at, at some point I'm just like, literally I am on the screen, like explaining like a slide, the slide puzzle algorithm or something like that. And it's like, I, I'm sorry, this is a little weird, but that's me. And he looks at me and says, no, you're not. And <laughs> so it's uh, I'm like, it's like, oh, uh, cause you know, it's, he's like, you're not wearing glasses. I was wearing my contacts while mm-hmm. I was flying on the plane. And uh, and I was like, no, that, that really is me. And and he's like, he's giving me the skeptical look. And Emily, on the spot, she actually has like her – she she went to the finale and yeah. had a special wristband pass that she – that that said Survivor David versus Goliath, like backstage pass. And I was mm-hmm. like, no, 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 really, this is it. But, uh, you know, and, and, and he was like – eventually he was like, oh, wow. That's cool. And I think eventually he set in on him. What a wild coincidence this was. Did he keep and, watching yeah. the rest of the flight? He did. And I was, I, I tried and, and I tried to, but I didn't want to be awkward and be like, excuse me, you're watching Watch this, me. check this out. Watch, 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 watch this part. This part's great. It's got me yeah. in it. You know, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but, I just, but it's like, and, 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 like part of me was just like, should I just not say anything? And just, but at the same time, this guy, like if you, I, I imagine it, it had to be wild. Like it'd be like if I were like sitting watching a TV show, I was watching like 90 Day Fiance. And like him, and, and and like and Jasmine's next to me on the plane. I'd be like, no yeah. way. Like, yeah. Like, exactly. So, uh, yeah. So uh, better I, than I, Gino. I, yeah. <laughs> That's another conversation. Yeah. Uh, the uh, and, and, and so yeah. So that was that was a funny story. And thankfully, Emily had the David versus Goliath wristband. I think if I had uh, if I had the the, the 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 presence of mind, and I'm live tweeting this whole experience. By the way, it's like this mm-hmm. guy does not believe me mm-hmm. uh, that I'm on this season. So that was fun. Okay. So. Mika has a question. Uh, Mika Star, do you have any predictions of what the group of eight will do from here? Will they stay together or uh, will new factions form? Okay, well, it, it's uh, seven maybe with Marianne. Yep, yep. I, I just, I kind of just assume Marianne's part of that. But like that's, uh, um, I, I, I mean, at some point the factions are got to. I mean, I, I, I my, my prediction is is that it will crack, and if it does not crack, it is to the credit of the Taku four that those, so like if they, it would be like, I'm trying to think of another time where the big Alliance didn't crack and maybe back in season 25 with Kim Spradlin, you know, she kept the women together Mm -hmm. uh, and voted off all the men. uh, And then she managed to keep herself in, in charge all the way through when the women started uh, voting people off. Like it would be something you'd be like, wow, those four really dominated the game. And just because there are enough good players out there, enough fluidity, I am betting against that. So maybe this, maybe the more specific question of this person is what would these new alliances look like? Mm-hmm. And so, well, yeah, go on. Do, do you have uh, an idea? Yeah. All right, I, I think what your, your hypothesis about having the, 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 the blue and the green Vati and Ika coming together, it's like, we got to take out some of these, so uh, some of these oranges makes sense i mean think about if you have these obvious cross tribal things that where people might want to work together you have the people who have the amulet right 
Yeah. So you got. I'm so, surprised uh, you you haven't charted this. What's that? The you chart, chart, chart out which one? Charted like the uh, the uh, alliance relationships. Well, I mean, the, the it's so I have a, a few lists here. I do have a few, so, so, some some minor charting here. Yeah. Mostly, it was about uh, who seems to have a close connection, and that was mostly going into the merge. And going into the merge, you had um, you had Romeo, Andrea. Those yeah. two seem tight on their um, on, on the Ica tribe, and you had High and Lydia going into this merge, and we saw how that turned out. We saw a new connection between High and Romeo that really popped together. Mike and Jonathan popped together, and Mike and Omar also popped together. A lot of Mike started cop cropping up. So the issue is a lot of those people are already currently in those alliances together, sans Romeo. So if I were to guess, uh, if someone were to enter the picture for one of these alliances, primary guess would be Romeo because he is both not on the alliance right now, but has good relationship with High, it seems. There might be a, a, a sub like a secret alliance there. And on top of that, uh, he's not viewed, as far as we can tell, as as having this person of, of, of being a non-reliable alliance member. Mm -hmm. So I think that that so honestly, it would be uh, so so Romeo entering the picture would make sense. Romeo enters the picture, he would do it with Drea and do it with High. And so if you get them, and then that's two out of the three amulets, you'd have to pull in Lindsay for the third amulet. Maybe you vote out Lindsay. And get the amulet power, get the steel vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the thing is, Lindsay, as far as we know, has not told anyone yeah. about the amulet, right? So if she gets blindsided, then it's right now. Then it's then it's only Drea and Hi who have amulets, right? And mm -hmm. know about them, as far as we know. The interesting thing about the four four four, though, is that Taku, even with Marianne's extra vote, are they a are they a threat yet? You know, if if they're four strong, ideal. I mean, you're really probably not worried about them until there's nine left. The thing that I that that would elevate their threat profile profile is Omar, Omar. I'm sorry, yes. uh, the, and uh, that he. It seems uh, definitely to the viewing audience that Omar gets a lot of credit for this. Lydia gave him credit in after the fact. Uh, in her exit interview, how well known is it that Omer pulled this off? And if you have Omer as a strategic force, you have Jonathan as a challenge force, and they and they're all four of them are together, plus whatever advantages they may or may not have, uh, knowing that Marianne has an idol, mm -hmm. uh, that's threatening. And the shield concept only goes so far. Uh, you, you know, at some point, uh, if, if if there's a power center that you're not involved in, you can't just let that linger. I, at least I, I'd be shocked if they did. So a move against the Takus, to me, would be uh, would, 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 that's where my money would be. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll see. Uh, so wide open. It's very, very wide fun. open. Look, I, I say, I say. By the way, I say this with very little confidence because this is a good amount of fluidity. And yes. and, for, and 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 even though I don't understand everything that's going on, I understand a lot of it, so I can at least track most. Like this, this, this is good. This is good. And as okay. as as long as they make it so we attract the, the 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 relationships from here, we're gold. All right, we are almost three hours into this. Uh, we oh, have gosh. not yet said the e word. Okay. Um, Ari Ferrari wants to know, uh, which vote would create the most entropy? First of all, how much uh, entropy are we at right now? Ah, so, so entropy, uh, I joked before was, was measured in, in Hubikis. That was of course a joke. The real, in real entropy is measured, I believe in bits. Uh, so we are, I'd say quite I, I a like, bit, quite a, quite a bit of, 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 uh, of, of entropy, but it, I would say it is a, it is a good level. Like there's, like, there's unpredictability. But not to the point where you have no clue what's going to happen. There are clearly there there are factions. There are I understand uh, this is something honestly going into the episode. This is a good season, but I really did not know what this was going to shape up like. I like I really didn't know like like who was going to be like uh, who the power players were, or even really who the big alliances were. I always knew the tribes, right? And that's because frankly we didn't have any swaps. You know, we only had these small tribes, but we just, this this episode added a lot. It gave us structure on which to predict the future without knowing what is going to happen. But mm -hmm. we know that there are the people with the amulet. 
We know that there are the tribes of four, now four, four, three, now that Lydia is gone. We also know there are the people who know each other about each other's idol. Actually, most people seem to know about the idol. Mm -hmm. We have this alliance of seven, maybe eight. It's not clear what that number is, what that number is, but there's some kind of faction, a vague faction that seems to be controlling the vote as of this stage. Uh, you have the people who are out of vote uh, from, from from this, but some of whom I imagine will not take well to it, unless for some reason Romeo was involved in some kind of split vote plan. I imagine Romeo is going to want to get involved. He seemed to want to take some charge. He wanted to get rid of Jonathan. Right. There's a couple. There's a couple pairs. You got high, high, high. Even though they did not vote strategically together yet, high and Romeo. I think there's something interesting. Sorry, there's something interesting there. Okay. Uh, additionally, I think the Mike and Jonathan thing. That's something interesting. There, that's a very, for them to outright say, wouldn't it be nice for these physically strong players to win for a change? I mean, I, I'm not once. buying it. Yeah. For once, yeah. For <laughs> it, it doesn't. I mean, we could, we could argue over the statistics, but like it's they they fare poorly post merch. For the most mm -hmm. part, like, mm -hmm. like, I mean, Chris Underwood won, but he didn't have to live through most of the typical danger points of emerge. Yeah, but uh, in the in the run of like the men winning the game from, oh, you know, men, 35 yeah. from 35 to 40. Men I mean, period, it was, yes. you know, uh, Ben, you know, uh, even though yes. he did not only win immunity challenges, but, you know, uh, you know, big, strong yeah. guy, Wendell, I, strong I, guy. You know, yeah. uh, Nick, you know, one, one out, uh, the, yeah. the immunity challenge, Chris Underwood, uh, yeah. Tommy who didn't, he didn't win, but again, you know, a strong, uh, a strong guy, Tony, uh, this wasn't like we had like, sure. you know, Cochran winning, uh, in this stretch. Yeah. So I'm glad you brought this up. I wanted to clarify. I meant it in a very narrow way. And what I meant was like Ozzy, like someone who is, is like had a reputation that yeah. when this person is in a challenge, my God, like you don't stand a chance. And that's probably not even going to be freaking the case after uh, the, in the mer with the merge challenges. I mean, they're just a completely different still skill set than the pre-merge challenges. It's a different thing. I meant in a very specific way. Like Ozzy does not fare well after the merge mm -hmm. because he has that reputation. And yeah. so I should, so I, so I, so, but more broadly, yes, men had overall, uh, and, 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 and they're not, um, I mean, and there are no slouches. Nick is no slouch in challenges. He won the last three, mm -hmm. uh, but that was not his reputation. Right. Going More, into, fact, the, the winners were mostly uh, players that were balanced, but also who could win challenges uh, like when yeah. it was crunch time. Sure. Absolutely. And yeah, especially and, and make fires. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, and more recently idols. I mean, Rick Devins almost got to the end off of mm -hmm. idols. Ben did get to the end off of idols plus a, plus a twist. I mean, like, so like that, that honestly that, 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 um, although I think that the, I think that structure is changing to how the idols are hidden. I try to remember how they were hidden post merge last season, if at all. Uh, I'm not sure that they were I at all. I I think that um, I'm trying to remember if there was any. I, I don't think that there was an idol hidden uh, at all last season That's what after I think. the merge. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure exactly, but I remember that I, like they, they weren't being played, so mm -hmm. they probably weren't being rehidden. Although uh, Sh Shan was blindsided with one, so you would expect one to be rehidden, but I don't believe one was. But I need to, I haven't reviewed that season. Yeah, or um, it was not found. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were never showed up. But yeah, so. Uh, but anyway, my point being is that, like, irrespective of the accuracy of the statement, uh, that it seemed uh, like like a very uh, like a very pointed one. Not necessarily that that they will win, but they clearly see a kinship with each other, and that was sort of like there are some times when you feel that there's a, there's a statement in the show that's meant to wink toward the audience as to something that is important, might not be true, but is a statement about the overall trajectory of this game. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Yeah. Uh, Mike said in the episode, uh, I'm not going to get voted out with an idol in my pocket. That's for damn sure. Um, is Mike going to get voted out with the idol in his pocket? <laughs> Michael's in the pocket. Uh, what, what, this is, this is a good data science, uh, operation. Cause like, that's, that's always like the joke. Like, you know, they, 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 they say it won't happen. Then it does. Uh, I, I, I swear there are some times where people have said that and they were fine. Yeah. Uh, but, it, but this is very early in the game. So, uh, like I'd say, if he says it again, yeah, then okay. I think we're we're doing the one, two, three. You know, like uh, I, I'll never do it. No, I'll never do it. Oh, it happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, Amy Cook wants to know. Uh, assuming we see it again, who would you like to see do the Monty Hall uh, do or die challenge this season? So first off, would you like oh. to see do or die back this season? 
Okay. Uh, from a game standpoint for the health of Survivor, it's not my favorite thing. But to see if anyone explains on air why it's good to switch boxes, then it, it'll be worth it for me. If there's a science, if there's a math education moment, mm -hmm. I would like to see it. But uh, yeah, I mean, Zan yeah, I mean, my understanding was that Xander knew that to switch yes. boxes. Yes, yeah, I had a very uh, interesting conversation with Xander a couple of weeks ago, and he talked about right. how that he was actually hoping that do or die would be that you know they did it at the final seven. He thought it would be the rest of the way, and he felt like, oh, okay, this is great for me because I'm gonna do because I I uh, like know the hack for Monty yeah. Hall problem. Yeah, I mean, and and uh, so. It, it, exactly. So, I mean, if there was an opportunity to explain it, uh, and it's hard to explain, uh, 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 but it, but it's a counterintuitive solution. I would love for the audience to learn something from it. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I may or may have not gotten into some Twitter arguments with people about the Monty Hall problem after that, but I, uh, I, uh, I, I I ran a few thousand simulations in MATLAB of the of the problem to to show the results. I mean, uh, but, we have know. seen just about every other single thing that they did with the exception of knowledge is power, which maybe yeah. could potentially still be coming. Yeah. I, I think that the overall structure, they're not deviating much to be honest. Mm -hmm. And that's so, it's, so like that is a big structural thing. I would, I honestly forgot that uh, about that last season uh, that that happened. Um, but yeah, I could totally, I think they'll do it again. I think they'll, okay. I think they're structure they're structurally they're, they're changed they're, they're, they're doing the same thing. Would you like want, to see somebody yeah. die on this one? Uh, would you like to see somebody get zonked? I want someone to win by switching. That's okay. what I want. I want that by switching they prevented their own demise. That's what I want. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, cause to learn, so, so even though it's all probabilistic, it doesn't really, you know, it, you know, it, 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 I, I want people to learn that that's the right thing to do. But if someone die, I, I honestly, I feel bad for the person that would get zonked. I mean, the whole thing of, I mean, they know they're going to play a game of chance, but like, they don't know what those odds are. And it turns out lots of people still don't know what the odds are mm -hmm. for that. But, but like, it's, it's such, it, I, I don't like the idea of having to make such a, a big decision based on so little information about a mechanic that you've never seen before. Uh, I, I like when people make informed decisions. And that can happen with Crazy Twist. We saw it with Knowledge is Power. We saw this wonderful subterfuge at the, at the, at the merge episode in season 41. And because people knew about it. But when it's something you don't know about and you're surprised by it, that I, and if someone went home because about it, I'd feel bad for them. Okay. Desmond Hume wants to know, could you invent a good merge twist? What would it be? Oh, so uh, I think we were dialing it in before. Like if, so if we're, let's, let's, let's take like an incremental approach to what they're trying. Okay. Yeah. Where, so we, so where few people are vulnerable, but everyone votes. Right. And so, I, I mean, the, 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 the straightforward one is just not have the hourglass, but whoever wins that challenge is immune um, from that vote and everyone else is not. And so, and I think that the way you would implement it is that instead of, instead of having it right at the merge, the alleged merge, uh, you have it at where you wouldn't typically do the individual immunity challenge. People come in expecting an individual immunity challenge. They have their target and they have their backup target that they're going to go for. Oh, wait, half the people are going to be immune for that vote. And mm -hmm. that could, could could throw could could throw things off, and that's a simpler version of it. Um, and because uh, go, go on, yeah. All right. Um, I'm just trying to like uh, work this through. This is a little bit like the do or die. Okay, let's okay. do. Okay, you walk in. Okay. Yeah. We have uh, twelve spots. Okay, individual immunity is up for grabs here at the merge okay uh we can tell you that the um bottom six people yeah they will be uh they will be safe from the vote okay the bottom the the the, fir the first six out of the challenge are gonna be mm -hmm. safe from the vote here at the merge yep yep somebody will win individual immunity the top six finishers are going to the merge feast so you gotta, ah. you gotta, you gotta, you gotta you kind of eat or compete, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. And then you kind of have sort of like random, uh, sort of you know who knows like what order people are going to drop, sort of protect 
the, like uh, I guess what do you think is, is the show trying to protect the better physical competitors? Well, so the th- the thing of like what the, is the only incentive to 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 do the challenge at all in any meaningful way is because you want food. So that's the eat or compete mechanic. Well, uh, yeah. That, that, go on. Yeah. Okay. Effectively. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because if you drop off, you need it. You uh, you uh, could the first six people out uh, be up for elimination? Could you switch? Could we switch it? So basically, it's the so. Yes. Yeah, so basically, Although individual immunity does not mean as much. It it, it doesn't mean it mean it. Yeah, because like, uh, so you would need the people competing that they know they're taking a risk, and so they would need a good reason to take the risk of being vulnerable. Because also, you have to decide like, how are only six people going to be able to okay. opt out to begin with? Are uh, you anyway, only but- eligible for the merge feast if you play? Uh, I think that that is a good way to go. I think that because could you imagine someone gets a I, I think I think these people are so desperate for the merge feast that might work because I mean, you saw how people downtrodden that they wouldn't get a merge feast. And yes, I understand what Chanel was saying that she's here to, to not to eat, but to compete. That's of course, that's true. But it's not just. Uh, it, it, Steven talked about this on the Know It Alls last night. It's eating is also a strategic decision for even just the food. And it, seriously, it is not just oh, I don't like being hungry anymore. I, I mean, I was fine not eating and subsisting on the island. I knew I wasn't going to die, even if I didn't have hardly anything to eat. I would just be emaciated. The problem was I couldn't do things. I couldn't by by day thirty by day thirty three. I could I I. I could barely compete in the reward challenge. Like I, I don't think they even showed mm-hmm. me competing in that challenge. I, I mean, I didn't think I was that bad, but I guess I looked that bad. They didn't bother to show me. I was so far out of it, and I also can't think very well. Yeah. I, like I, I, I was fine giving up food. Like I would give Carl like extra food sometimes for, out of my thing because he didn't go on rewards for a long time, and so you want to make people feel like not feel bad because they didn't go on rewards. Like I give up food, but like I regret it now just because you the calories are super important. Uh, and you know, I, I imagine like in that scenario, you just posited, uh, Rob, Jonathan, if he doesn't get immunity, he gets to eat, but if he wins, he also gets immunity and gets to eat. So of course mm-hmm. he would, so of course he would do that. Right. And he, he, cause he was so big, he felt he needed to eat so badly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you could be. He could be uh, like uh, again. I think we're getting closer. I don't think we yeah. have it have it exactly. But the no. thing is, I, I love and I want to give them credit because I think that the instinct to go with a two hour episode at the merge, yes. I think, is a good one. Uh, that uh, that yeah. to have two hours devoted to one vote in the mm-hmm. middle of the season at this very crucial point in the game is is great and they did a much better job with that this season than they did last season because really they built a whole episode around the cliffhanger of is erica going to break the hourglass this time we were able to spend more time on like the camp life around uh the merge and we got a lot more conversations and roxroy broke the hourglass at some point in the second hour but it wasn't like that we built a cliffhanger of a week on uh, is Roxroy going to break the hourglass? Of course, he was going to break the hourglass. Yes, the, the merge is incredibly complicated on uh, on any modern season. I mean, I remember the Edge of Extinction merge. I vote was really complicated. Like it actually, mm-hmm. it, like it, 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 the actual vote itself was complicated. On top of the plotting, and even the ones that doesn't look that complicated, I guarantee you, there's a lot going on. So it's I think I think that that's a good staple to have. In addition, the reason that they can do a two hour episode with one boot because because they only have eighteen players. They wouldn't be able to do that in a 20 player season. I think have the hours to get rid of everyone unless they really fast forwarded some of it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so the if they have the, yeah, so, so to speak, you know, they, they, they have, they have, they have to, the, you know, what's the opposite of turning back time. You do, you don't smash it. You, uh, put duct tape around Flip it. it over. They, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. And so, uh, you, and, and I guess also because these are shortened seasons, they can't have 20 players cause they would be booting people like every 24 hours mm-hmm. or something, you know, at, at different right. points. So, yeah. So, um, but so th- that's good. I think just the only problem is that you have uh, this like wacky thing about like people want a challenge, and then you take yeah. it away from them. So, yeah. 
Uh, and I, I know you need to also like have like another piece of business in this two hour episode. So we have the big set piece challenge. Uh, mm -hmm. We have the merge fees and then we need some other sort of like, uh, I guess, decision that needs to be made, but just make it be anything else. Yeah. The thing is the, the problem with another. Uh, so with, with this whole thing, you give one person uh, the hourglass holder, a decision that doesn't seem like a, that important, like, like of that cliff angry of a decision. Uh, with something like everyone choosing to compete, you see the choices made. And anytime you get an opportunity to give, make survivors make choices, there, there, there are there, there's 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 good options for drama as a consequence. I mean, they tried doing that a bit by making it so you could sub in from the winning tribe to go to the island. But the most you get is Jonathan saying, Man, I almost did it. And that's not really like that informative to the audience, other than you see the way he's thinking. Uh, but it, it's uh, yeah, they, I think that they need to be able to choose uh, what's going to happen. Like, okay. you know, uh, yeah. Can I can I add to our uh, merge feast or compete that right. to Let's unlock see. the merge feast, uh, we need a minimum of uh, six people to play. We need some sort of a quorum. So, okay. Yeah. Now all these people that are sitting out, maybe you know you're getting pissed at them uh, because now there is no merge feast for the people that want it. Yeah, so I think that uh, so there's a couple of mechanics here. We can like list out the mechanics that are typically yeah. done at these things. There's the, the there there there's like the, there's the quorum decision. I'm writing these down on my notepad here. You got uh, you you have random tribe draws as to who gets sits out or whatever, and that's not fun. You have like a representative who makes the decisions as to who goes. That's the hourglass twist. Mm -hmm. um, so. And they've done that sort of quorum idea a few times, like like, like when, when they had to get the shelter in season 31. Yeah, even last even, season, right? we had the whole thing with uh, where they needed more rice, and then Shan was negotiating with Jeff. Yeah, yep. Negotiations, they always go well. Mm -hmm. And the so so I think that uh, I, I imagine I, 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 th I like the way you're thinking because it puts decisions in the hands of people. And also, like, whenever you get people electing to eat as opposed to for a opportunity for safety survivor loves that because then they can edit that like oh someone just made a million dollar mistake you know mm -hmm. by doing that as if you know that's that's the way they talk about it and yeah. so so uh but i like the idea of half being vulnerable at the merge yes um i like that too it, it, so it forces people to work together i think that they're on to something with that and I think that the other thing, though, that they like is that they wanted it to be a surprise. They didn't want people to be plotting for three days for one boot, boot and then it stay the same boot. They wanted it to be a surprise right before tribal council. But guess what? We do that anyway if as long as you just do it at when the immunity challenge is going to happen. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's fine. So just have them expect that there's going to be a single boot, but then there's going to be a half boot. Um, th th there's a, ha a half are going to be safe. Uh, the only danger that that happens is that what that, that the, the only thing I don't like about these sorts of things is that it only works the first time because mm -hmm. people don't know what's coming. It's a surprise. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that uh, if it, it, as, as long as it's, it's a structural thing that people know at this stage, there's going to be half people who are not going to be uh, eligible for uh, who are who are going to be eligible for elimination? Oh, here's what I thought of. I've, I've, Rob, I'm I'm sorry for being around the bush. I thought about this yesterday. Uh, the what if there were pairings of people who competed for the challenge? A winner and a loser. The winner is uh, is safe. The loser is not. So there's some agency like a duel, in the like a duel. That's perfect. That's okay. the word I'm going for. It's a duel. So you have like so you have six duels, and question is how are the duels decided? Okay. Um, and you could either have random draws, which is really mm -hmm. luck of the draw, or do, is there some process by someone gets selected who has to set yeah. up the duels? So I do think another thing that the show is trying to wrestle with, which also like gets us into sort of like this random draw is I do think that they are trying to look at ways to make sure that the game is fair to everybody, uh, where it, it, it doesn't it, like, even it has not been the case where I, I do think that they are trying to think about every single step of the game where, uh, like a duel, I think probably favors, uh, the more physical players, uh, yeah. who would probably all, win their respective duels so mm -hmm. 
I, I think that they probably are looking for ways to inject randomness into it also. Yeah. So that way, so, so that way, uh, anyone could be safe potentially. I think I think it's a good idea. I, what, I was, what I'm going for, and is that and, and that um, that like there that someone would be you know, the, 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 would be chosen who is going to be in charge of making the duels, and maybe mm. the duels aren't the same. Here's a puzzle. Like maybe yeah. maybe maybe Marianne doesn't have to win a tug of war with Jonathan, mm -hmm. but maybe they put them on a puzzle together or something like that. It's like you know I'm going to put Marianne against you know, against Jonathan on the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the person making that decision is clearly laying their cards on the table as to where their loyalties lie. I just think and, that might be a little time consuming to do six, yeah. uh, you know, different activities in the episode. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Oh, so, like, uh, so secret scenes. Yeah. yeah. Secret. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're, look, we're, we're closing in. We didn't look, yeah. uh, we're not going to crack the whole thing in three hours. Okay. We're trying. We're trying. We're trying. So. Okay. Uh, Sarah K wants to know, uh, what would or should you do if you walk up to a group of people uh, twice and they instantly scatter? Did you ever have this? Uh, no, but I, I, I use the opportunity to call out something that Hyde did very well. Uh, like I think Hyde did exactly the right thing that he sees Chanel coming over. Right. And so and says, hey, everyone, just so you know, Chanel's coming over. So let's just talk like we're talking about this thing. And then she, he Hyde does the right thing. He go over, looks at her and he like waves her over. Come here, come here, come here. Like we, mm -hmm. we're glad you're. We're basically we're glad you're here. We were just talking about about we think that this is going to be a potential good group. I set it up well. Everyone else seemed to just fall to silence, and so like that's yeah. So uh, so uh, so what? So has this happened? Oh yeah. I like. I, I would say that uh, like Angelina did this kind of right. I remember in one conversation in the early merge that like. Uh, um, I was walking over to a group of Goliaths. I had I was walking with Allison over to this group of Goliaths, and Angelina was giving like a speech, and you could tell she was very animated. And um, and so I walk over, and um, and I and Angelina's like, oh, clearly is inviting us. Oh, okay, come over here, and she continues her speech. And then she, at the end of it, she's like, and that's why we got to get rid of Elizabeth, okay? And like and like, but she was talking about me. The whole mm -hmm. time and switch the conversation, and so it was mostly right. I, like she, like she clearly got like how to do that. The only giveaway was that we, had, like, according to the story, everyone was talking right there. We decided to get rid of like Elizabeth two days ago. So why was this this impassioned speech about getting rid of about this decision that was already made and done and set? It's like okay, that's not right. So what do you do? So I mean, I can only say what what, what like I, I did. You like you 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 act like everything's normal. You act like everything's fine, like, and you just go along with the story. And if you're at all curious about whether it's true, you're just you try suspicious. Just start asking any kind of questions whatsoever about yeah. what they're talking about. Any questions at all, and if they follow the silence, uh, I guess the jig is up. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, one um, of my favorites is uh, see it. Like, see if they if they're talking about a plan. Uh, ask if you could change the plan. Like, uh, like, Ooh. uh, like, oh, what if we, cool, uh, what about, you know, in, in, instead of Applebee's, can we, can we go to Outback? And if they're like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah sure, okay, sure, sure, we can do that. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, if, they, if people are like super agreeable to like, uh, like it's probably not the right thing. It's like, no, no, no. What are you talking about? We're going to Applebee's. We've we got this whole plan. Like, oh, no, no, no. I, I, I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, of course that wouldn't work. We got to, yeah, we're going to Applebee's. Yeah, the the um, there is a lot. Yeah, that's I love that. Uh, there, there there is a lot of information you can glean from very simple questions. Um, mm -hmm. Like, uh, uh, and um, I mean, sometimes I mean, it, it's like. It, it's a, it's a little bit you know, watch Game of Thrones or like these yeah. early seasons like when Tyrion's trying to figure mm -hmm. out who's the leak right you can do things like that you can like th that that that's what some of the fun of Survivor is you could do it in the fun context of this fun game where like you could ask a question that you already you, you ask questions you already know the answer to and see if they give you the answer that you know is right I mm -hmm. mean uh, so that, that that's a classic interrogation technique there mm -hmm. are videos online that show how cops interrogate uh interrogate criminals although i wouldn't recommend that that tactic people tried mm -hmm. that on me and i did not enjoy that uh so uh, uh hot it, cops so, yeah it, there was so dan had an interrogation technique and uh which theoretically is effective in getting out information but it made it absolutely clear he wasn't working with me at one point so mm -hmm. like so like so like there, there there are limits to what you can what you can do but like uh, uh, of how far you should push people but 
there are great little tactics like that. I love the one you said. That's cool. Because uh, mm -hmm. they're not really wedded. You know, the, uh, the the fake plan is only paper thin. You know, it it, 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 it dropped at like at, 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 at dropped at the at the at the, at the first sign of trouble. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. you know what? That uh, yeah, yeah, let's do this. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, and I I know from experience because uh, in Survivor All Stars uh, that you know when Boston Rob was feeding me uh, what we we're gonna do uh, that uh, he told me uh, we we're gonna vote off Sue Hawk and I had said well uh, what could we do a, what like uh, I thought we we're gonna do Alicia and he's like oh okay sure yeah fine Alicia yeah. I was like okay. Uh, and, okay. and, and, but like, oh yeah, like, of course, uh, of course he, he told me whatever I wanted. I, like I, I was getting voted off. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, and the contrast is that if you're in the majority and someone comes up to you and they're not on the side, that side of the plan, you got to engage them. You have to engage them as if like they're <laughs> intelligent adults that want to partake in a plan and like construct the alternate world with them where, where the plan makes sense and talk it through with them and then go layers deep with them. Mm -hmm. You know, Chanel, like, um, so like, you know, like for instance, Chanel comes up, walks up to this situation. You know, I, I, we only saw a piece of it. We don't know what she asked, but like everyone fell to silence, but let's say that there was a bit more conversation. She could be like, okay, that's awesome. Like, what do you think of adding this person? Like who else do you think is good? Mm -hmm. Uh, it's like, are you concerned at all about blank and just delve into it mm -hmm. and see if you get anything intelligent out. Right. Um, and if Chanel comes up, uh, not everybody at the same time uh, say, "Oh, yeah, I'm going spear fishing." Yes, and we good. only uh, have two spears. Yeah, I mean, it's it Chanel's defense. I mean, I don't think she had to do much <laughs> interrogating to figure out what. Uh... Yeah. Um, okay, let me just see if there's anything else uh, that I have for you. Um, we've covered so much. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Kelly H says. Does this feel like a brand steal to anybody else? They copied the format and played it out with a different cast. Now let's bring back an entire cast and change the format and see how it plays out. So, uh, meaning that like, uh, they, they ran the same season twice with the same format to see how it works out with different players. And that's what they did for 41, 42. Yeah. Oh. And I think that, uh, well, I think that the first part, uh, was more of an observation. And then the ah. second part was more of, a, a, of a, of a, of a suggestion. suggestion. Um, do you feel like this was a brand steal? I mean, sometimes you have these people working together. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe this person is working with this person at the merge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that um, the, it does have a little bit of that feel to it. I mean, I, I try to be hyper aware of the fact that when we're watching the show and we watch an outcome that that outcome is not predetermined or that outcome is not just a, a, a purely deterministic outcome of the setup of the show that there's so much randomness that happens with the people, little things happen that could drive it to a completely different solution. I mm -hmm. mean, I think this is a pretty good example. The last merge vote that we saw was big majority of, of tribes picking off the Yasas, right? Or like the equivalent of Yasa, right? Yeah. They all they all they all banded together to take out the Yasa. Yasa, therefore, with the grace of their advantages, is able to push forward and survive. This one, there's cross-tribal chaos. And uh, so we see the two different, you know, the, the two different modes, at least two different modes of this entire game, and shows that there is a lot of randomness to how this game goes, and that's dependent upon the cast. Mm -hmm. Well, Christian, um, so much that we've covered here yeah. with Survivor Forty Two. Uh, was there a a any other final Survivor thoughts that you have? Oh, I think I think we covered so much, and I appreciate you going through it with me, Rob. I I uh, I, I hope this is a, a great and crazy ride going to the end with with relationships that. How could it not track. be? How could yeah, it not yeah. be? I, I sure I, my hopes are high. My hopes are high, uh, and uh, and as a result, I I, uh, I I'm excited to see where this goes. I saw that you were bummed out recently that Star mm -hmm. Trek: Next Generation got pulled from Netflix. Yes, that's correct. It got pulled from Netflix. It's my, it's my comfort show. That mm -hmm. Better Call Saul, my comfort shows. I'll just put on episodes and mm -hmm. just enjoy. And and the good times are gone. But there, it's it's on other streaming services though. Yes. At least one. So yeah. okay. Uh, have you kept up with Star Trek Picard? I, I have not kept up with Star Trek Picard. And uh, I, I, uh, uh, it, I, have you been watching Star Trek Picard? You know, I actually uh, fell off last season. I sort of just jumped in with uh, season two. Uh, it's been an interesting ride. Okay. All right. It's interesting. So that's a, uh, uh, I, I, uh, 
I am very much a I'm happy with the Star Trek I had seen before. Nothing to say about I haven't I haven't seen the new Star Treks, and that's just I have the Star Trek that I need. And if I ever feel the need to dive in, I, I will at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, I mean, to me, what uh, like I the stories I have through the next generation uh, telling this tale of people who aspire to excellence, who are respectful of each other and, and have a commitment to ethics and values and how these characters work together in this crazy world. I, I love those stories and I have, and I, and I have a lot of them and, you know, and, and, and I, I'm happy for any show Star Trek or otherwise, where they re where, where they put characters in an interesting world and they, and they, and the writers really understand the characters and how they fit together. And that that's what I love to watch. And that's what I love about the next generation. All right, Christian, anything you want the listeners to check out? Anything that you're doing? Are you still twitching? Uh, I, I, are you too busy? I, I had, I've, I, the semester has been crazy. So I have not been twitching much this you semester. You just go to but Dave I, Ball's Twitch. I go to Dave Ball's Twitch. You hang out there. Uh, Gabby's Twitch. Uh, I, 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 I love to, I, I would love to check out more when she, when she's on there. I'll probably pick it up a bit more during the summer. Uh, I did, I, I did recently give a, a TEDx talk, uh, oh. which is, so, uh, which I hopefully will be on YouTube and not terribly long, uh, on, uh, it's called, uh, robots that think on their feet. And it's about my research into making robots walk, but also 20, about 25% about me spending time on a show called survivor. So there's a fun mix. I'm glad I got to give it. Okay. Well, Christian, I always appreciate you uh, spending time with me that these podcasts are so much fun. The time flies by. Uh, it's really such a great breakdown. This was uh, the perfect time to do it. So uh, I, I just uh, appreciate you so much. And I thank you so much for coming on and talking with us. Thank you so much, Robin. It's great to be here. And you have a wonderful evening, okay? Okay, you too. And for everybody else, thank you so much for listening to uh, Christian and I. We've got a great one coming up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, Tiffany Seely is going to be joining me for the Survivor Feedback Show. That should be a lot of fun. And of course, in our patron feed, uh, I'll be talking with Gia Worthy on the Survivor Academy at robinswebsitecom slash patron. Thank you again. Uh, Christian, all the best to you. Take care, everybody. Have a good one.